Hello, Janksters, and welcome to another edition of the Magic Jank Podcast, the show where members of Team Magic Jank get together and we discuss the latest happenings in Magic the Gathering. And it has been a very eventful like couple weeks. I mean, things have been pretty insane. And of course, we want to dive into Thunder Junction previews because they're here, they're happening. You know, we, we are in the, the midst of spoiler season and things are getting a little nuts. So naturally, we're going to cover them. And you can see, folks at home from the runtime, just how long we went. I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a heavy one because we, we've got thoughts and, uh, sure. and feelings. So my name is Graham. I go by Hamhawks42 on the Internet and I'm joined by Hollywood Pizza. How's it going, my dude? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, just hanging out, just chilling. Really excited for the set. Uh, Heck yeah. I was already like really, really hyped on it. As soon as it was like announced, and now I'm like really in on it for sure. So, oh heck yeah, you love to see it. And then we also have Carlo, aka C. Forever Junior, in the house. How are we doing, my dude? Hello, everybody. What's going on? Oh man. So yeah, this is exciting. We're here. Thunder Junction is upon us. I know they they've unveiled it. They unveiled that it was going to be happening like a year ago, and I remember thinking, "Holy cow! I don't yeah. like old, old, like old west stuff, but I need this in my life." And mm-hmm. uh, Oko and a cowboy hat. We've seen it. We're we're doing it. What's not to Every, love? Everybody in a cow, cowboy hat, apparently. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. If you, I, and actually, the more that we see, the more I realize, just like, if you can think of your favorite character in Magic, whoever it is, there's a good chance they are wearing a cowboy hat in one of these cards. <laughs> True. It's like it's like Karloff Manor and everybody wearing the detective hats. Mm-hmm. Same, yeah. same same vibe and and the number of legends that are here i mean in like tons of them there's some deep cuts too like you know like i don't i don't i don't necessarily plan on talking about it today because the card is like interesting but like there's a new bruce tarl for example like how did bruce tarl get here i don't know but let's go like <laughs> the standard <laughs> <laughs> into standard exactly yeah yeah commander exclusive bruce tarl now in standard sweet yeah and he cares about oxen Let's go. Uh, anyway, so yeah, things are getting weird. Things are getting silly. So we're going to dive into that. Before we do, I want to give a huge thank you to MagicJank.com, the namesake of the show, the online marketplace where you can buy and sell Magic the Gathering products and gear. And that's like when we say gear, we mean pretty much everything. If you have a product that is, you know, something that would be appropriate for a Magic audience, like people who enjoy Magic the Gathering, whether that's T-shirts, so, you know, crafts, dice, you name it, you can list it on, Magic, uh, on MagicJank.com and reach a whole new audience. So... Definitely check them out. Uh, cool. And so I, I'd be remiss talking about Thunder Junction previews without calling out that our buddy Carlo here, C. Forever Jr., in fact, got official standard legal preview cards. Can we talk, talk? Can we stop for a second and just appreciate just how awesome that is? So congratulations, dude. Yeah, we got two preview cards, and I showed them at different points during the day on Wednesday. One I did like at noon because who doesn't want to see a preview card while eating lunch? Heck and yeah. uh, the other one we did live over on my Twitch stream um, as we were doing like a community brews and battle night. Um, so that was nice. Um, one very clearly standard and or pioneer playable, whereas mm-hmm. one's a pretty good limited uncommon, I would say. Um, so it, it's nice that we were able to fe- feature two different cards that would see play and in two different formats, uh, and I had Luna, of course, with me to help me make some preview videos and everything like this, and uh, she dressed up as a sheriff, so that was that was fun. Th- that was too cute. You know that, right? Like, that was that was weapons-grade cuteness. Oh, my oh, goodness. Yeah. yeah, absolutely adorable. And the, the, actually, and the bandana around the neck and the cowboy hat, and she was cool with it. It was really impressive. Yeah. yeah. So let's go ahead and, I mean, let, we're going to do individual card discussions. So let's go ahead and start with those two cards. So sure. I'm going to go ahead. I've got Thunder Lasso up. So, Carla, did you want to do the honors of kind of walking through uh, what this yeah. card does? Let yeah, the people so know. Thunder Lasso is an equipment, uh, two and a white. When it enters the battlefield, you auto attach it to a creature you control, which is fantastic mm. ability to have on equipment. Um, it gives the creature plus one, plus one. So that's fine. But the triggered ability says whenever the equipped creature attacks, you tap a creature that the defending player controls. So this all really matters how the format in limited goes, right? If it's more of like a a one creature per turn type format or tokens or go wide type of a limited format. If it's the first, then this card is super good. Um, Not saying like a first pick or anything, but it's a nice addition to a sweet aggressive deck uh, in draft or sealed. Um, but if it goes wide, this card becomes a little bit worse. Uh, but the auto attach is very nice. I mean, there's lots of creatures in this particular set that the ones that have been spoiled anyway, that either have like 
three toughness. Like they're they're like two threes and three threes. So sometimes you just need to get your two two to be that level. Um mm-hmm. or your three three as a four four um to try to attack over that. And so traditionally you have like aggressive Boros decks, and so I expect to see uh something like that in this limited format. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I think you're exactly right. In limited, this is going to be of, uh, you know, you got to respect this card in limited. I would be shocked if anyone finds a use for it in constructed because these kind of, this kind of tap down effect often yeah. doesn't quite translate as well to constructed, but who knows? This honestly is one of the better versions of it because you mm-hmm. get that tap down every attack regardless. So yeah. that's a lot better than other versions where we've seen before where you have a creature and you have to pay mana and tap it to tap something down. Right. It's a little bit better than that. So, I don't know. Well, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. And at I've, least it only costs two to equip. Yeah. Right? So, if bad. they end up killing your creature, you're, you've are you got enough mana to keep it going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I dig it. So, that's the one that we know is going to be a player in limited, but we don't necessarily think it's going to see constructed play as much. Right. Your other one, however, shoot, shoot the, the sheriff. sheriff. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. So, this is one of the sweetest mono black removal spells i think that we've gotten in some time and i i would say probably since the D set because this card reminds me a lot of power word kill mm-hmm. um if for those of you who remember that back in the day i guess uh but yeah it's one in a black and instant destroy target non-outlaw creature so of course this has to have reminder text on it right and it tells mm-hmm. you what an outlaw is uh outlaw creature types include assassins mercenaries pirates rogues and warlocks, uh, but everybody else is fair game. So, uh, you know, given a lot of the cards that we've seen come out in the standard recently, um, clearly we were on Ixalan, so there were pirates, right? Uh, clearly we were on Karlov Manor, and there were assassins, right? Um, mm-hmm. Rogues are pretty spread out throughout mm-hmm. the world. Uh, warlocks, though are interesting that they would include that creature type as an outlaw. I think because Gisa is in the set, and so it wants a, a, a removal spell that doesn't necessarily hit that card. Um, mercenary, though, is more specific to Thunder Junction. There are a lot of mercenary cards, mercenary tokens in Thunder Junction. So I don't think that this card would see much play in Limited, because a lot of the relevant creature types in the mm-hmm. set, um, this can't hit. In standard, however, uh, I think uh, Saffron Olive even put out that this hits like 46 out of 50 relevant creatures that you need to kill uh, for two mana. And it's actually more than go for the throat because the other, some of the other threats are artifacts and can't be sure. hit by go for the throat. Um, so definitely standard worthy. Um, and also at the same time, I think pioneer worthy because the cards that are played in pioneer right now really don't match any of these creature types and power word kill which is legal in that format can't hit angels and pioneer has a green white angels deck in that format Mm. so this helps you hit that those creature types as well um interesting i definitely think that this card slots in in pioneer to the red black vampires deck as a solid removal spell Mm -hmm. um maybe over some number of go for the throat um but we'll have to see. Pioneer RCQ season is going to be upon us in a couple weeks, so we'll see how playable this card is. But I think it's a it's a staple removal spell for some some years to come. Heck yeah. yeah, this card is. Uh, yeah, when I first read it, I was like, "Wow, this card is incredible. This is definitely one of the best removal spells." Period. Um, right. <laughs> almost no drawback outside of you know not being able to hit some cards that. Some creature types that don't really matter most of the time. In all honesty, this is the only set you're going to see them. So I think that some of the playability of this card in standard is going to depend on how much of this set is played. Um, sure. Because there are going to be you know, more mercenaries, rogues, mm-hmm. warlocks, etc. in this set. But uh, to Carla's point, exactly about the pioneer uh, and beyond maybe even. Uh, this card kills pretty much anything. Um, at, so I definitely expect to lose of this card or mm-hmm. see it quite a lot and play it myself because yeah it's it's like a little bit better than go for the throat mm-hmm. um so maybe I, maybe we end up in a split like two two to go for the throat to this card and mm-hmm. call yeah, it a day because most of the time you're going to hit both of the same cards except for in the few yeah. situations where the metagame says hey there's more artifact creatures or hey there's more 
rogues, warlocks, etc. Because a lot of the artifact creatures aren't really around. Most of the artifact creatures that I remember getting played were the Seraph. I forget what the ability is called. Prototype. Steel Seraph. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, the prototype. Yeah, those, Steel Seraph and like those Flesh Gorger. Cards. And those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Absolutely. those cards don't really get played as much anymore. So I you know, go for the Throat Stock definitely went up again. But mm-hmm. uh, Shoot the Sheriff is a card that I think we're going to definitely see here uh, going forward. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to have a moment of like, wait, why can't I target that? Wait, that's a rogue? Like, that's going to come up a lot, I bet. Sure, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, yeah, no, bottom line, super playable removal. Yeah, you love to see it. I, I like how they also keep it kept it flavorful to the set to not hit like some of the bombs that are here, right? Like, mm-hmm. so we've seen like Rakdos. Rakdos in the set is a mercenary. Uh, Vraska is an assassin. Gisa is a warlock. So they they wanted to make sure this uncommon removal spell didn't hit like the mythic legendary creatures, um, <laughs> whether it's for the flavor or not. And some of the yeah. other legends that we'll see and and preview in a moment. Um, are some of the relevant creature types. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. It all depends how many cards out of the new set end up getting played in Standard. There's not a whole lot of those creature types being played. You know, so for example, uh, this, you know, probably won't do you well on the first couple days of Standard on Arena because people are going to try to jam the new cards. Um, <laughs> yep. But as soon as the metagame settles back down and people have determined... Oh hey, Golgari just seems to be good as is. I don't think I need to add any of these other cards to it. Oh wait, except shoot the sheriff. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it's it's gonna be pretty nice. Absolutely. Uh, one thing that I want to mention real quick is that uh, my favorite part about this card is how it it's silly. Uh, it doesn't mm-hmm. take itself very serious, and I think that that's one of the most important parts about a set like this is that the set can't really take itself serious. It kind of has a lend into some of the corniness and, you know, the campiness. And I think that, uh, everyone else is fair game. Yeah. Has got to be one of the coolest things I've ever seen for reminder text. Yeah. Like, yeah. When I first read that, I was like, wow, they like did that. That's, that's pretty cool. Like they don't yeah. really have to. Yeah. Put any at, elements of the game into it outside at of the just pre-release. Saying, imagine how many people are going to like raise a hand and ask, "Is this creature considered an outlaw?" And it's like, okay, first of all, read the creature types that's considered an outlaw, mm-hmm. and then what else does the next sentence after that say? <laughs> right. But but yeah, the way that you the way that they put it, and by the way, for audio folks, that is literally in the flavor or not the flavor text in the reminder text. text is the sentence. Mm-hmm. Everyone else is fair game. That's printed yeah. on the card, and that is it's a little self-aware it's a, it's a little silly while still being to the point and delivering the message yep. and you know we've seen jokes in reminder text in unsets and this isn't a joke but the tone that's used for that sentence is a little light-hearted in a way that we usually don't see in officials rule, official rules text and, and i agree that like it doesn't detract from the card and it's kind of fun so great mm-hmm. okay, yeah i dig it very cool all right So next up, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and keep on cruising through. Next up is actually one reprint that we want to talk about today. Uh, So at this point, there haven't been, I mean, we've seen a number of reprints that have been spoiled. A lot of them are just kind of like, oh, okay, that's going to be here. Okay, neat, whatever. Uh, Like, oh, that's that common land. Okay, whatever. But this one is a card that has only been printed one other time. And we're, we desperately need reprints as far as commander pricing is concerned. I am just shocked that it's showing up in a standard set. And that is Terror of the Peaks. If you were not playing around the time when M21 was legal and standard, then yeah. you may not be familiar with this card. If you did, you are. It is a 5-4 flyer for 3 red red. Uh, with Yeah, with flying spells your opponent's cast that target Terror of the Peaks cost an additional 3 life to cast. Functions similarly to Ward, but Ward wasn't quite as ubiquitous then as it is now, and so it functions a little differently. Uh, It's an additional cost, not a trigger, so that's a thing. Uh, But then, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So, is this going to see play? Is this... Is is, uh, Terror back on the menu? Okay. (laughs) 100%. You know what this card's really good with? Most plot. things. <laughs> it's really good with plot, and I feel like you can set up some plots with this, and you can have just one huge turn where you cast Tire of the Peaks, cast two more creatures, shoot your things down, or shoot you in the face, 
maybe give everybody haste off of mm-hmm. like um the brotherhood card or you sag it everyone gets haste stuff like that like I know that's reunion, a janky. Yeah. yeah it's a little janky but i mean we've seen that card get played so i mean it, i think that the sky is the limit for literally uh mm-hmm. for this card it's um yeah i didn't ever think i'd ever see this card in standard again it's really powerful yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that with plot specifically, you can line up some really huge turns with this, and then you can you can just kill the opponent out of nowhere. They they can they can have a harder time like playing around it if you play this. They don't have the removal, and then all of a sudden now it's just game. Or I mean, they got to pay three life to kill it too. Like this, all right. This card is insane. This card is still insane. Listen, y'all know I've been playing Rakdos quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> This goes right into any like Rakdos mid range ramp reanimator deck. Mm-hmm. Listen, right now we have in standard Trumpeting Carnosaur that can double as a removal spell on three mana. Mm-hmm. We have now Terror of the Peaks on five, which coincidentally we can cast off a of Discover Five from a Trumpeting Carnosaur. We have Atali Primal Conqueror. We have cards like Cruelty of Gix and Push and Pull, which reanimates two creatures out of the yard for six mana and gives them haste. Like, how this card doesn't just slot in there with some early ramp and, you know, playing discard packages like Bitter Reunion, like Bitter Triumph, like discarding Carnosaur for three mana to deal three to a target. I don't know what else does, because if I'm Push and Pull in... Two Carnosaurs from the yard. They're entering play. It deals 14. I'm swinging for 19. Uh, GG's. So that's uh, like that. That's insane. Yeah. And that's not even talking about like the routes that you can go with some jank with Doppelgang and Terror of the Peaks. Mm-hmm. I mean, the land deck already <laughs> generates infinite mana. So if we can generate <laughs> infinite mana into Doppelgang on Terror of the Peaks, that's an alternate win condition right there. I yeah. got half World Souls Rage. Right? Yeah, I have one Terror of the Peaks. I'm gonna doppelgang for three. Three more Terror of the Peaks enter plus whatever other creatures and like yeah. G G G Big time. Holy cow. Yeah, that's insane. The other one that I saw that uh, I saw it on Twitter and it just made me smile. In that this is ridiculous. This isn't gonna be competitive, but boy howdy, I wanna try it. It's gonna be fun. Is uh push pull with Terror of the Peaks and Yargle and Multani. So you oh, yeah. pull Terror of the Peaks out and Yargle and Multani. It immediately domes your opponent for 18, and then you can swing with both of them. I, if, assuming they're still alive, which is yeah. not likely. <laughs> That's, yeah. This 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 card's even silly. They, and, even if they yeah. kill the Yargle, they still take 18 plus 5. Right. I got to say, though, so this this is a welcome addition and we're going to we're all going to be doing crazy stuff with this. And it will I I will be shocked if we do not see some kind of competitive mid range or combo list taking advantage mm-hmm. of this. I'll be uh, absolutely shocked. Yeah, right. The, the Breach of the Multiverse deck with this is dumb. Like you can't silly and hit this and any other card and the game just ends. It's like pretty okay. much. Yeah, that's going to be absolutely nuts. But uh, the one thing, though, that I got to say, it's going to be a bummer having Terror of the Peaks legal and not having the Scoot Swarm machine gun. Yeah, that was fun back in the day. Like I would play a land and like ping you in the face for one like thirty times. Like I miss that. That was fun. Play awake in the woods, Ham. It gets played in the land deck. Oh, there you go. Yep. All right, I'll give your heads up. I'll loop. You would play Terror of the Peaks in the land deck, right? Because you just get all your stuff back, and then you're good. You kind of like go off with whatever. So yeah, yeah. I think it's. I man, I can't believe this card's getting reprinted. It's coming back. It's a weird mid range. It's been needing a reprint for quite some time. It, yeah, it's, it's been. It's like forty bucks. Yeah, yeah. It, it is needing a reprint. I am shocked that the reprint isn't in the commander product. I'm shocked yeah. that it's in the standard legal set. That is nuts. Yeah. So strap in, everybody. You're gonna yeah. you're gonna see this thing a lot. It's gonna be fun. Dragons, so, but buckle I, up. I don't, I don't know card, what your right? next card transition is, Ham, but it's perfect to go from this into Smuggler's surprise. I mean, let's, we talk about an, let's talk about another card that can just wheel you into oh, Terror yeah. of the Peaks. <laughs> let's do it. So, yeah. So, Smuggler Surprise is an instant, and it show, is showing off a new mechanic in Spree. Uh, now, Spree is kind of, it's a new mechanic, but it is going to seem very familiar if you played with Multi Kicker in the past. So, the way that Spree works is the, I believe all those spells that we've seen with Spree so far um, don't have any rules text by themselves. Like, there's no base effect on the spell, but there are additional costs that you have to add to the base mana cost in order to add effects to it. So it's kind of this a la carte spell where you can kind of do whatever modes make sense.
cents, uh, and the cost varies depending. So yep. with Smuggler's Surprise, it is an instant for a single green, uh, and the different modes start with a plus two, but so it's two uh, colorless, or two generic. Mill four cards. You may put up to two creatures and or land cards from owing the mill cards into your hand. So three mana there, you know, mill four, potentially draw two. All right. Mm -hmm. Green Plus, divination. yeah, so the other, then the next mode, and that's the thing, you can get as many of these as you want to each activation. So that costs two mana in addition to the one base. <clears throat> next up is a four and a green. So if this is the only mode you're picking, you're, it's six mana, two of it's a green. You may put up to two creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Did I mention this is an instant? This is an instant. And the last mode is one generic. Creatures you control with power four or greater gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. So it's heroic intervention at worst. It's, you know, it's this mill regrowth, you know, that's actually pretty, like, it's one of the better mulches we've ever seen. I, I, yeah, and everything resolves in the order that it shows on the card. Mm -hmm. So if you pay nine mana at instant speed, you mill four, put two of the creatures into your hand, put those two creatures onto the battlefield, and why not give them hexproof and indestructible ton of turn? Just because. Yeah. It's 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 a tooth and nail. You all remember tooth and nail from back in the day? Like mm -hmm. at worst, it's that card too, right? Uh yeah, call, right. costs nine mana. It, it costs the same amount as a tooth and nail. It does. Twine, so. If you use all the abilities, yeah. If you use all of them, yeah. But at the same time, if you're in a in a big crazy ramp deck and you have an, I mean, the 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 situation that people keep mentioning or the one that I see a lot associated with the card, it's the dream scenario where you have an Atraxa and an Atali in your hand, right? I've got fourteen mana with a bunch of crazy with all five colors represented, and because I have four green green on your end step, I can vomit that onto the battlefield, crazy, like right. I got one better. You got a Galta. How about Just, Galta and Atraxa? <laughs> and then we put all of our hand into All play. the entire hand. Oh my goodness. And it's got Carnosaurs in it. And then it's got Tali. Like at this point, if your opponent has a Conceited. Right. <laughs> there's something yeah. wrong with them. The, honestly, this is going to be one of those where the number of explosive plays that this is going to generate, it's going to be to a point where even if you have nothing in your hand, if you're on your opponent's end step and you put this on the stack, they might scoop out of reflex. Like, that's what this is going to be. Like, it's, it's like when somebody casts Breach the Multiverse and you mm -hmm. just like, don't want to play against them anymore. Yeah. Like, not, not saying Breach the Multiverse is like oppressive, but it's just that type of a card, right? Like, mm -hmm. somebody is seven mana Breach. You don't have an answer. It's usually GG unless opposing player has Sunfall. Um, mm -hmm. You know, this gets around that because Breach is a sorcery. So nice Sunfall on your hand. Here we go. All on your end the battlefield GGs. Yeah, it, it, it's insane. Uh, well, yeah. and on top of that, if you're going up against, you know, a more controlling deck, which these kind of like big value combo decks tend to struggle against, you can throw this on your opponent's end step. If they counter it, that's one fewer counter that they have and their mana is now some amount of their mana is tied up and so you can then on your turn maybe just cast one of the creatures that you were gonna yeah. try to sneak in off this you know you're still in a good space even if it gets answered just because of the timing I, yeah now of note with spree the way that that works is in your deck in your graveyard and you know effective especially for the purposes of discover and cascade this is a one mana spell so if you discover into this it, it's only one mana but you will have to pay mana into the additional costs if you want the effects. You don't just get carte blanche to grab whatever, because yeah. uh, that would be insane. So if you discover into this and you do want to cheat two fatties in your hand, you better have another five mana to add to it. Otherwise, no dice. I'm sorry. But with discover, yeah. it would just go to your hand and you're yeah. teed up for later. But and yeah. These cards are really like good with um, Isochron Scepter, <laughs> where you can put it on the Isochron Scepter for cheap. And then essentially you can just like for two mana plus however much more mana every turn you can hit every mode on all of these cards and then uh, yeah you can put like a, that Wrath of God on the Rysacron Scepter and just wipe oh the my board goodness every turn. that's disgusting yeah and you know we we just recently started seeing cards like Virtue of Strength uh, mm -hmm. be played and in the the lands deck anyway. And I think cards like this make Virtue of Strength playable in, like, these bigger green decks. Um, mm -hmm. One, because, you know, your Virtue can can fetch back a card, a creature, or land, right? So if you mill one of your win cons into the yard and you're not a reanimator deck, well, that's fine. And then you can just pay seven mana and then untap, no answer, and you actually just have infinite mana. 
Um, <laughs> right. You know, and you don't have to try to win with World Souls Rage. You can do that by playing those other go wide creatures. Um, yep. And you can mill to them, right? Right. Um, this card also might be decent in playing like the uh, the like the Tarmogoy style decks, right? Mm-hmm. Playing Souls of the Lost and Cruel Somnophage and yep. uh, the Lurgoy from Dominaria United. Like even just for three mana, it's mill four, keep all the trash creatures in the yard, take your Tarmogoy creature, right? At, and, and then untap creature pass. Like it, it's good just on three. I love um, it. So yeah, I, I expect to see this in a in a number of decks. Yeah, yeah this card just I don't know this card. It, yeah, I think it's it's either going to be like really good, I guess, or it's just going to be really fun because I I read right. it a lot and it just seems like a commander card to me. I get a lot of the dream scenarios in constructed. It just seems a little bit harder to mm-hmm. accomplish. I feel like the heroic intervention is the best part about this card because it only costs two mana. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, this card's almost playable in like Grease Fang because any card that says mill is yeah. close and then extra modes obviously could make that deck better but because you can't put vehicles and stuff into play then it's mm-hmm. not as yeah. useful but i think yeah i think in like the big mid-rangey creature decks i think this will be an all-star because of the divination i can mill some cards maybe put some cards i can use later in the yard and then mm-hmm. i can put some cards in my hand and now i have two more cards i can play and so on and so forth so yeah it, these type of card the type of cards that you want in these is cards that are never bad. Mm-hmm. This card is never bad. I can right. use this card whenever I want. It always has an effect that's useful, so on and so forth. I feel like those are the best modal cards. Yep. Whenever at least one mode is always useful. Right. And this card at least has a divination, has redraw. Mm-hmm. And th- like I said, the heroic intervention might end up being the best part because yeah. as we know, snakes can veil effects are really good. And when you're able to do it to your whole team, um, obviously the biggest downside to this card is that Sunfall got printed. So <laughs> there's that. Yeah. yeah there's that. <laughs> but it does, a bit annoying, it does but... beat out the the white uh Indeed. one mana card that does the same. Uh or, or that 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 has spree also that wraths. It actually beats that because it only destroys. Indeed. Yeah. And uh, let's go ahead and I mean, that seems like a great opportunity to just dovetail into that one. So the final showdown, which, yes, will be to the theme of the final countdown uh, in everyone's head forever, because that's just is what it is. That's right. Uh, is an instant for a single white with spree plus one generic. All creatures lose all abilities until end of turn. Another plus one generic. Choose a creature you control. It gains indestructible until end of turn or plus three white white destroy all creatures again this is an instant people this is an instant <laughs> yeah uh, it's yeah. it's so yeah. interesting so this card this. <laughs> this card makes your opponent's creatures that might have indestructible no longer have it nope. you get to save one of your creatures if you pay full or you could just pay six mana at instant speed and wrath the board like this is blue eye controls wheelhouse, right? Like one hundred percent I want to be playing some number of these in that deck. Even though you have cards like um you know Sunfall and Depopulate, which costs four. You have no witnesses that costs four. You have um the six mana wrath and farewell, but that does exile. Stuff like that. Um <laughs> And I know, like, everybody complains about not wanting, like, more Wraths and stuff like that. Right. Um, I think this is setting us up for a nice replacement for when Farewell goes away. Like, 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's going to rotate in September, right? Six months out. Um, and it's it, it's definitely... De- I, I don't know. I've been playing Blue Eye Control and RCQs recently, and I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is my go-to. I want this right. for sure. Yeah, no, I think this is absolutely insane. I mean, six mana instant speed destroy all creatures. I mean, I was running route in a couple of my commander decks anyway, and that's seven mana for that effect. I it's genuinely very, very strong. Additionally, I think a lot of people are sleeping on the first mode of this. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize how good that is. All creatures lose all abilities until it a turn. Let's assume you're going up against, you know, some kind of aristocrats deck where they have a whole bunch of blood artist style effects on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Well, 
it, the, however many of those are creatures, like, okay, you have your Blood Arts, you have your Sir Conrad, you have your Cruel Celebrant. Well, guess what? None of those have any abilities for the remainder of the turn. Or yeah. any crazy death triggers. Nope, none of them. And they're, then they're all dead, and none of it happens. Like, as so a Retadrabic enthusiast, that scares mm -hmm. the... You know that that scares me to no end. Additionally, you can simply pay two mana and have all your opponent's things that have indestructible hex proof any of that jazz, but just gone. Yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, honestly, I think, uh, yeah, I think this card is nothing short of insane. It's an absolute banger. Yeah, yeah, this card's gonna end some games. Instant mm -hmm. speed, make my tally indestructible, wipe the board, untap, make my guy get poison, smash in, you're dead. Stuff like no, that. Yeah. Like I, and I and for one mana, you can save your, your favorite thing. Yeah, it's yeah, for two it's, mana. Imagine playing this two mana against the toxic deck and making all of their creatures lose toxic. <laughs> That's brilliant. That is a two mana play that uh, that kind of that fogs that deck specifically. I love right? it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like That's ni amazing. nice mites you have here on the battlefield. What about oh, that? is that venerated right. prop priest? Guess what guess what else doesn't work this turn? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, no, it's really nice. That's that's awesome. Yeah, no, th this card, card is, I think uh, is randomly yeah. good in shadow too. Like uh, you can just just like dress down. You're like, oh, yeah. by the way, yep. I, I just make my cards thirteen thirteens and you die. Yeah. So maybe you can play that shadow with white now instead of blue and. Oh uh, wow! Give yourself a board wipe, or make your death shadow indestructible, or in play solitude while you're at it too. So I feel like there's, <laughs> I don't know this this card is. I mean, you could you could uh, evoke right. I, but I was just about to say, like, uh, evoke, no, evoke not evoke. Evoke is a triggered ability, so this okay. won't stop that. But yeah, but it's it's close. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, shadow decks like that, I can uh, use it. Well, hmm. no, never mind. Yeah, I was thinking they're like Crocs or Uro, those kind of things. But yeah, dress down being a static is really important for those. All right, yeah, yeah. okay. But yeah. yeah, no, good stuff. No, final showdown is it, it's nuts. Uh, yeah, we're gonna see a lot of this card and. We apparently are just going to see. It apparently is the case that we will see a a playable whiteboard wipe in every single set for here on out. It just <laughs> is what it is, and that's just. <clears throat> I mean, what was the, when was the last set that didn't have one? I wonder. I don't know. We just know at this point we're getting some board wipe every mm -hmm. set. Yep. Uh, last set we got two, right? We got no witness plus devious cover up. Yep. Yep. Fun stuff. <laughs> All right. So next up, I want to talk about another another white card that I think is pretty decent, but maybe on the cusp. Uh, so yeah, I want to hear your guys' talk. Uh, you know, thoughts on it. This is Avon Interrupter. It is a two two flying flash bird rogue for one white white. When it enters the battlefield, exile target spell. It becomes plotted. Spells your opponents cast from graveyards or from exile cost two more to cast. Now, when something is plotted, it is in exile, basically suspended, and you cannot play it the same turn that it has become plotted. However, after that, the controller, or you know, yeah, the controller of that spell that is exiled and plotted, you can play it without paying its mana cost at any sorcery speed time in the future. So on their turn, empty stack, they can rock it out, uh, but for free. And so what you're doing is whenever you have a, a lot of cards have plot and a specific cost. And if you were to pay that cost, you then just exile it. You're basically putting a down payment on it. Yep. And then you can play it as early as next turn, but if it's not advantageous to do it next turn, you can wait and then play it. You just have it in the holster ready to go, uh, which is an interesting design, I think, uh, and definitely fitting for the quick draw kind of, the idea you know mm -hmm. um but in this case like what we're doing yeah i was just gonna say it's like a different version of farewell for those of you <laughs> who remember farewell in cal time right where you got this this little spell or off the side works. that you could play later yes yeah similar to foretell the difference also i gotta say flavorfully i find that hilarious because with foretell you pay two and you put it face down so there's been a prophecy telling people what will happen, but you don't know what's going to happen. Meanwhile, right. plotting, you're planning a heist, right? You're planning something that you're going to do in the future, and it's face up. As mm -hmm. if the bad guys are going to tell the people trying to stop them what they're doing. I, right. I just, I find flavorfully, I understand why they did that, because plot has different costs. And mm -hmm. so if I spend four mana, one of which is blue, you can probably assume what plot I just put down, you know, even right. if it's face down and the cognitive right. load associated with trying to memorize all the plot cards would be, it wouldn't be fun. So yeah. they just, nah, it's just face up. So, okay, fine, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's a fun, that guessing game with foretell cards is always a good time. Um, For, the number uh, of times I, I 
was not baited into a saw it coming only to watch them cast a behold the multiverse oh anyway uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we've all been there right for uh, my money i think that this is one of the best cards in the set even in roger uh, yeah i think this card's absolutely absurd um before I go into a little extra, I think it's really good with Collect a Company, too. Just another <laughs> card that makes cards like that a lot better. Yep. But uh, the first thing that first makes adventures cost more, makes your opponent's plots cost more, mm-hmm. uh, makes red decks that rely off the top of the library very bad. Uh, like your light up the stage, stuff like that gets way worse off of this. This card is insane in multiples. First, I counted your, counted your spell. My turn? Back for two. Go. Oh, you're trying to recast it? Counter it again. Now, now it costs four. So it's like, oh, now it costs four. Oh, mm-hmm. geez, I'm never casting wow. this card again, probably. Or, like, if your deck revolves around casting cards from Exile, then mm-hmm. this card is bonkers, right? Like, it's good against Expressive Iteration, right? Because you're casting that card from Exile. It's good against... It's just good against so many cards. This card just hates... Like, this card will out-temple you, and then you can't play Magic anymore. Well, it also, yeah. It also makes it so you cannot tap out for Itali and cast spells off Itali from Exile. Oh, no. Because you can't... It'll it'll plot the spells. So it'll be interesting. I want to read the rules when it comes out. Battles. Because if I, if I go to cast your spell off Itali, do you get the plot in your Exile zone? Because it's your spell that you own? I don't think it. Ha- I don't think that happens. Uh, with Avon Interrupter, you plot a, a card. W- you plot a spell that's on the stack when it enters right. the battlefield. I think that's it. Other than that, so no. With Atali, it, this would function similar to uh, Thalia today, where if you tap out for an Atali, spin in something, and Atali is online, you have an extra one. If you can't ca- pay it, you miss out. And this is the same thing, but it's two. Then and, and well, you you it plots the card, but when you plot it, you cast it at a later oh, turn. Oh, later. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. That's why I'm saying is it I'm curious where the rules fall because if it's a spell you own that mm-hmm. I've cast off Atali and gets Got plotted, it. sorry, does it, does it go to my plot zone? Do I get to cast it and then have to kind of like two? how adventures work, where when you get the adventure card from them, right. you cast the adventure, but then that card actually goes to your zone because you cast the card. Wow, adventure. that's how you happen with like Love Struck Beast and stuff like that, where I would See- take their Love Struck Beast cast the one side of it, then I'd be able to cast the Love Struck Beast later. Because all that stuff yeah, is still if you mine. Ca- if you cast... No, no, no. So if in the, your Love Struck Beast scenario, if I cast the adventure side of your Love Struck Beast, it goes into my adventure zone mm-hmm. and I right. can play it. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so I'm curious if it's the same here for a spell that's plotted that an opponent owns. That's a really good question because this... the I, I'm guessing my we're gonna have to read the release notes when when we get there you know i'm sure that someone has a ruling on that uh but my guess is uh that if you know if i'm trying to cast a spell that you own like i siphoned it siphoned inside or uh, tally spawn and you cast an even interrupter exiling that spell I'm guessing you own the plotted card because the way that this is worded it says you know it becomes plotted as a separate sentence. Like there's a right. period there and then its own sentence. So it doesn't, it doesn't say like that spells controller plots it right, or something like that. That's so, the main keyword. Uh, you, you know, not, not, I'm not, not a hundred percent sure. I'm very curious to see how that interacts and how that plays out. Yeah. But it's probably yeah. like Gonti, right? Ga- like it's got like that Gonti feeling where yeah, like yeah, still spell mm-hmm. you can cast. Yeah, because it goes to exile because it doesn't go to your hand, something weird like that. Right. Um, but yeah, I can, think because it, it goes to exile, I'm pretty sure you should still be able to cast both of the cards that you get off of Atali. Yeah. Well, no. The the question is, if you're trying to cast my spell and I have an even interrupter, can I reclaim ownership of that spell, or can I cl- mm-hmm. reclaim yeah, control exactly. of that spell here? Yep. Yeah, that's the question. We'll figure it out. We'll definitely try it. But yeah, no, I 100% on all of these things, all these points. I completely agree. I think this card absolutely slaps. And and Hollywood, I love th- what what you're saying there because you're 100% correct. This secondary that that static that spells your opponents cast from exile or graveyard. So that includes flashback and any of that jazz. It, adding two to all of it that impacts a lot in today's magic so yeah, yeah. no i think you're absolutely right I, just taxing adventures alone it is like yeah, such a journey move, but i love it um <laughs> man this card just i yeah. just feel like this card does everything it's 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 giving decks that don't normally have this effect that effect where you can counter a spell like oh i guess i'll just counter your your board wipe <laughs> 
It's like, oh, well, I guess your board wipe's gone. And then if I have another one, then you're definitely screwed because you're going to try to recast your board wipe for seven. And, and then we then also encounter it again, and the game definitely is over. So. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a removal like soul partition that like exiles things temporarily or exile it and you get the chance to cast it back again. But like, come on, or how often is that like going to happen? If play this you with Dranith Magistrate. It. You play Dranith Magistrate mm -hmm. on turn two. You play this, they can no longer cast the card. It's over. You just can't cast the card anymore. Yeah. So yeah, so, yeah this card is going to be, I, I think this card is going to be really good. Yeah. Total banger. All right. So next up. Uh, let's take a look at another card that I think is going to see some play. Maybe not in standard, but uh, maybe we'll see. Insatiable Avarice. This is a sorcery for a single black. It's another another spree card. Uh, this one has two modes on it: two generic. Search your library for a card, then shuffle and put that card on top. So three mana sorcery speed vampiric tutor. Mm, okay, but there's another mode: black black. Target player draws three cards and loses three life. Mm -hmm. So how do we feel about Insatiable Avarice? Well, uh, first of all, the first card that came to mind when thinking of this, um, 100% for me was Shieldred of the Apocalypse. <laughs> and the reason it was Shieldred of the Apocalypse is because it turns this card in a into a possible win condition if you make your opponent draw the cards off of the ability because mm -hmm. then they'll lose two for each card they draw plus the life from insatiable avarice so it could be a nice little like not make this card a dead card in the late game type of a thing um or if you want you can just pay three um at sorcery speed and vamp tutor which honestly is better than the other like pseudo vamp tutor cards we've had in the past mm -hmm. um i think Though for it to be worth it in standard, consider the amount of considering the amount of cards we have at mill, you need to pay the full mana cost for this. Right. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the mode that kind of blows my mind is black, black, black. Target player draws three cards, loses three life. Like that. That's a very playable card. And you're right, especially if you have a shield down. That's a win con right there. You just because that's nine damage if my math serves. I mean, holy cow! That's <laughs> well, that, we're not talking about that, right? Either, but you this, know, holy cow, we'll talk about that. This later, ability but. cost four before to do this, right? Mm -hmm. To be able ambitious to draw cost. three, lose three. Ambitious cost, yeah. Yep, yep. That was the the card. It was a sorcery for four, yep. and I don't even think it said target player. I think it said you draw you. three cards and lose three life. So mm -hmm. this, you even have the flexibility of getting that like crazy sign in blood kill, which we're always chasing, right? So I like, yeah, I think this is. The sign yeah. in blood kill and and playing a deck that's milling out your opponent to zero cards like the um, reenact the crime deck mm -hmm. and then you pass this and you make them lose on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't even just, get to untap in case you have any kind of walls. instant speed nonsense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, I agree with what both of you guys are saying. The triple black draw three is the best mode. Um, the vamp tutor is just a little bit too slow, I think, especially in standard three man is a lot, but mm -hmm. one of those cards that just gets better as the game goes on later on in the game, you're just like, Oh, I got extra mana. I guess I'll go get the card. I need to win the game. Yeah. Or like, you know, you, I, I didn't even think about this card with shielded. I'm laughing still That's because it's bonkers. hilarious on, on coverage. I just know we're just going to see someone play the shielded, uh -huh. play this card, kill their opponent. Oh, 100%. Two, it's gonna, it's gonna have another nine. You're dead. Uh, uh, I can't wait. Well, yeah. this if you think about it right now, if you're in a mid-range battle, how many of those come down to who can top deck a card draw spell? You know, how many times have you been just back and forth with a controlling opponent and you're both in top deck mode and yeah. they find a memory deluge and it's just like, well, I might as well just scoop because they're just right. going to they're going to refill and you know, refuel in a way that I can't. Well, this yeah. is a mono black variant of that. You know, cuz it's 5 mana, search your library for a card, put that card on top and then draw 3 cards. So like you're drawing three cards and you get tutored for one of them. I mean, yeah, five mana is a lot, but that's a lot of value too. So yeah, I, it, this is an interesting one, and I think it'll absolutely see play. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, the, the, this could make the mono black deck playable again. Mm -hmm. Like that's absolutely. definitely a thing. Yeah, interesting stuff. All right, next up, I want to talk about another spree card. 
Yeah. We, we're ended up going through all those free cards, and I'm a, I'm totally okay with that. Oh, yeah. So we have three steps it's a ahead. Spring. I know we're having a spree of sprees. So except that one bird that kind of in, in, interrupted the middle of it and uh, appropriately. So we it, almost like we planned that. Check it out. So three steps ahead is an instant for a single blue. So just one, just blue. I was like, it's just one blue. No, it's just blue. Anyway, for blue spree plus one in a blue counter target spell. So cancel plus three create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control plus two draw two cards then discard a card talk about a card that's never dead <laughs> so, yeah so definitely three mana cancel right yeah three mana cancel at worst uh or three mana draw two ditch a card or four mana make a copy of an artifact or creature but you can also pay six mana to counter a spell draw two cards discard a card mm -hmm. which is actually just glorious yeah or you can pay yeah you can pay four blue blue counter target spell create a copy of my torrential gear hulk to the you know or, or however you want to do that yeah. um so yes please there there are options here it's it's a c double it's cancel it's quad like it's got a little bit of sublime epiphany energy yeah i think uh I don't know. I think this is a very flexible, uh, you mm -hmm. know, blue card. At the end of the day, cancel is not a great counter spell. It never has been. And, you know, it's oftentimes overlooked for better options. But I think given the additional flexibility here, I feel like control decks might want to consider this. I think this right. is just more of an EDH card. I think that there's some juice a little bit if you can counter spell, get some redraws. Because most of the time in a control deck, you're not playing creatures. Mm. Uh, you're copying like a samurai token or something that's like okay i guess but i think that this card's going to shine a lot more in edh where you can build around it you can maybe have some more comes into play effects uh, you can have a turn where you counter someone's spell copy your creature and then do something else the next turn or maybe do a combo where now i have two of this card and that mm -hmm. helps me combo off a little bit mm -hmm. um i just feel like the fact that it's not a full out divination really hurts it but uh at least for quote unquote uh competitive constructive sake but I think for EDH, I feel like this card's going to be really good. Slots into a lot of different decks, and yeah, put this on an Isochron Scepter, and we're good. Again, Iso Scepter. Love it. I can I can yeah. copy my other Isochron. I can use this to copy another Isochron Scepter. Oh. I can copy another one, and then I can do it again, and then I can make... Ooh, baby, now we're talking. Dude, you you yeah. did it. You finally broke Isochron Scepter. You know, it's it's been <laughs> 20 years, but we, we found it. We did <laughs> it again. We did it again. <laughs> <laughs> love it but actually i think it's it's interesting though because i'm realizing there are a lot of mid-range i love i love playing reanimator that's my thing uh and having the option like putting this in a deck where drawing two and discarding one is going to get me value no matter what and just having cancel in my back pocket if i absolutely need it could yeah. be you know th yeah that sounds good I'll, I'll take that cool all right so next up i want to talk about colossal rattleworm Oh, more green Because, of course, we're in an Old West uh, desert-themed set, so, of course, the worms here have, like, rattlesnake rattles, which, honestly, I'm totally on board with. I think that's, that's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, so, this is a worm. It costs two green-green for a 6-5. Colossal Redworm has Flash as long as you control a desert. It also has Trample, and you can pay one in a green, exile it from your graveyard, search your library for a desert card, put it onto the battlefield... Tapped, then shuffle. Is this thing yeah. as bonkers as I think it is? <laughs> I think it's I think it's really good. I think there's a lot of value to it, especially in the land deck that we've been talking about, uh, that we've seen on coverage a bit recently. Um, obviously, this card gets better as more multiples hit the yard, stuff like mm -hmm. that, and mm -hmm. you finally have like a desert, uh, etc. But I still, on rate, everything's good. It's four mana, six, five, it has trample. And it does something a little bit later. I just feel like I don't know how good a green card has to be to beat Shieldred. I feel like as good as this card is, uh, well, I'm a green mage. Th that I is just, an unfortunate uh, part of clear, isn't it? It yeah. makes, them, still, it makes them have to block, right? Mm -hmm. like, six power, you gotta respect it. There's only yeah. so many sixes yeah. that they're gonna take. The downside of the card is the part about it that's good, which is the flash part, is the preemption is that you have to have a desert in play. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the deserts that you have, and hey, we still got more spoilers to talk about. I mean, more spoilers to still be revealed as of this recording. Right. 
the only deserts we know about are the common cycle, where there's ten of them, and they are dual lands, essentially, but deserts. Um, and then there is the bounce land that, like, makes double double colorless arid archway. Um, which I don't know if that card is playable in standard, but it's definitely a commander card. Um, so I would love to be able to flash this in. Like, it's got to be a limited all star because you're likely drafting multiple deserts in your deck just for mana fixing. Right. Um, that being said, though, it is a 6 5 for four. And I think the only real, like, comparative card to that is Pelucranos. Mm. from um uh march of the machine it's a four five for three mana with right. reach that can transform into a bigger creature um so you know it also competes for a slot with the uh the four mana death claw mm, death claw maybe not death claw it's the oh I'm sorry Axbane Ferox. That's the one. Yep. Two double green and it's got haste, right? Or yeah. can have haste. Yeah, it has so, ward. Yes. And ward. So, yeah. Two aspects about yep. that card, right? So four four death touch haste, ward collect evidence four. Um, I think that card is more impactful on turn four than this card is, given that you need the desert. Um, yeah. That's not me saying that this card is bad. It be interesting, but you have to then work your mana base around the desert, which makes your mana base worse. Unless they spoil uh, some other I like think really that there good will be deserts. creature deserts. Right. I think there'll be creature deserts, enchantments, and maybe artifact deserts. I get a feeling mm -hmm. that we're gonna see them sprinkled in somewhere because I'm pretty sure we saw a desert creature or something like that in Amonkhet, if I remember correctly. Um, but really? I feel like they we're seeing these tap lands and these mm -hmm. obviously you're right there's more cards to be spoiled so I, yeah i'm expecting maybe so we'll like a see. rare or two desert that'll be yeah. good kind of just like how we saw caves mm -hmm. right. so i think that in the same light as caves i think that that's where we're going to see deserts like i feel like this card up front is good but i it's weird like magic is so different now i just feel like this card needs to do one more thing it needs to do something every turn because this card isn't doing something every turn. Right. Like you, you, be beaters aren't good enough. Like, you right. just can't have a six five. You See, know? Like I, that's not good enough. Yeah, I think if it had flash just natively, like if it had flash all the time, this card is a uh, is phenomenal. Cause then that's yeah. like, you know, that's a quasi haste, because on your opponent's end step, you flash it in, call it a day. So mm -hmm. that's you know, that is a very, very powerful thing. As a like, if if you have access to the flash consistently, then I think this card is I personally think this card is excellent. You're right that beaters just don't, you know, the the mid-range beater isn't really a thing that sees a lot of play and works very well right now, which is why like six five for four with trample, I feel like is perfectly fair. You know, like there's a time when I would look at that stat line and be like, that's ridiculous. How like how could they print that that much stats on you know for that little mana? But in today's right. standard, yeah, whatever. Like if green is gonna be the good creature, you know the good stat line color, that's what you gotta do. So right. I, I'm not mad at that. But the downside of these of these deserts is that they all enter the battlefield tapped. Yeah. And so if you're playing an aggressive deck that wants six power to hit the battlefield on turn four. You don't want your turn two play or turn three play to revolve around a tap land. So that really hurts. Yeah. The only thing that's going to get around it is playing cards like Splunking, which will make your tap yes. lands and our play untapped. So then you have to ask yourself, do you want your green aggressive deck that wants to put in the six, five on four at instant speed with Splunking in the same deck to be able to do that? And I don't think the answer is yes, because no. there's so many other options that you can be more aggressive with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, the card, in my opinion, is pretty mid. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, it's it's wild. Whatever. I, just wait till you die to the desert, Carlo. You're gonna be I like know, one, I and know. you're gonna chop like that desert, that, and you're gonna die. And well, that's the other thing, though. Stuff. The second mode on the on the rattle worm, it looks like a non-issue. It's like okay, yeah, you have a, a you know, you have this kind of what is it open the gates effect of you know kind of in your graveyard we can go grab yeah. a desert sure whatever like why you know that's not a big deal but the common deserts that we've seen enter and deal one damage to target opponent it's true and so that could get you that last one damage that you need 
Uh, which, you know, that's the dream, right? You like you blast your opponent, get them down to one, or maybe you have two of these in your graveyard, and you're able to just pull the deserts to get those last few pings in. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's a not, dream. there's not a card in standard but, right now that makes you, like, sacrifice lands to do something, right? Like, not there's really. There's no scape shift in oh. this format, because let me tell you, that would be fantastic with Splendid Reclamation. Uh, yeah. And, <laughs> and all the variants and, of it that we and have. Yeah. Aftermath Analyst and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, to make these cards come into play and do a damage rather than gain life um, seems pretty sweet. Um, Absolutely. And hey, you never know, like, might make it so that is a deck that comes into existence after rotation in September because we'll lose the Capenna lands. So instead of gaining a bunch of life back, we're just going to kill the opponent instead with deserts. <laughs> yeah, aggressive Actually, deserts, even though they don't like tap lands, mm. might like these lands. Yeah. Just because you're able to deal an extra four yeah. damage out of your deck. Just like um, you used to play Ramanap, and then you also used to play, what was it, Scorching Desert? Yep, yep. Or some scorched desert, maybe I don't remember what the card it was, but it dealt one yeah, damage it was when a it came to play. One that dealt damage. Yep. Yeah, I feel like we might see Amonkhet style deserts where they tap for colorless, maybe deal you a damage. Yeah. And tap for Possibly. a color. I just feel like we haven't seen. If I knew enough about caves from Ixalan, we have yet to see the best deserts. Where we still got at least. Two rare deserts, I'm calling right now. Mm -hmm. Remember, on this podcast, I called the Fastlands being an outlaws, and the Fastlands yep. are an outlaws. They, sh they are. Don't don't forget yep. that. Um, so I think we'll at least see two rare deserts, and at least one or two more uncommon ones. Maybe ones that draw a card, or um, I mean, we could see scavenging grounds, right? Scavenging grounds is a desert that exiles a graveyard. It'd be great for standard. oh yeah, that would fit. Uh, uh, that'd be a reprint that would untapped. Yep. So, I mean, I mean, there's there's cards. Um, Funny, we started with the worm, and now we're talking about deserts. But the, oh, I but think the worm is still the worm is yeah. still good. I, I but, just yeah, the thing about lands decks, I think right. I think that how I feel. I, I think that's an appropriate transition because at the end of the day, the worm gets its best, or what I think is probably its its biggest um, buff if deserts are playable. Like if deserts are good, this is gonna be good. But so far, what we've seen with the deserts, they're probably not gonna be great by themselves, and this probably isn't enough of a payoff to to put a bunch of deserts in your deck. Um, you know, that's, I don't know, some kind of, I want to make some kind of desert world souls rage thing happen. I think that would be yeah. a good time. Ooh, what if we go, okay, hear me out. Hear me out. We're going Jund and we're putting braids in the deck so that every turn we can sacrifice a land to oh, put, put pressure on our opponent <laughs> to try to sacrifice a land. If they don't, then we return it. Anyway, just a thought. The jank, the jank is flowing. Yeah, so I'm going to do Jund <laughs> Land uh, Punisher oh, effect. Yeah. Let's get Obnixilus in there too. Why not? Because then, hey, you know, without with Obnix, this could become a six power or a six loyalty planeswalker. We get the additional. Okay, anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> we need to get. I've been hanging out with the Astrals too much. This is a <laughs> true. I have anyway. to blame that other landlord. <laughs> Oh, fun, fun idea, though. So, yeah, Colossal, Colossal Rattleworm. If there was ever going to be a decent green four drop, I feel like this is probably about it. The question is, are green four drops decent? Well, we'll see. But, yeah. Cool, cool. So, the next one that I want to talk about is Step Between Worlds. This is a rare sorcery for three blue blue. Each player may shuffle their hand and graveyard into their library. Each player who does draws seven cards. And you exile Step Between Worlds. Now, notably, this is a sorcery for five, but but it has plot six. Yeah. So this is an interesting one. So yeah, they made it fair. They made it too fair. Yes. Because why can't I live the dream of Shieldred, then next turn, step between the worlds, make opponent take 14? Like, I can't because opponent can just choose not to shuffle and draw. Um, but I can gain 14 life right away and get a new hand of playable cards. I mean, that's um, true. Yeah. You know, you, <laughs> so you also can't get got by Narset in older formats. Right. Um, so it's <laughs> oh, too you, fair. They still can, but not if they're paying attention. But, I'll, I'll still get got by Narset in older formats, but most people won't. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So the, the, uh, the idea that a wheel is optional for you know for your opponent um they're for any player like even you could choose not to if you wanted to which in games of like two-headed giant or something might be relevant but um 
you know, if you have a teammate, then okay, maybe they need to wheel or something. And you don't, I don't know, but you, well, and on top of that, actually it, you shuffle all of it. it. This is similar to a time twister. You're shuffling your graveyard into your library as well. Mm-hmm. It's not just a wheel. Uh, yeah. So that's interesting. Also, how do you feel about the plot being more expensive than casting it nah. fairly? I, I'm not a fan of this card. Like I like it because it says draw seven cards. That's why I like it. But I mean, yeah. Um, Outside of that, I just like, I agree. It's just too fair. It's just, there's no real way to break this card. It feels like, like even if you, it, yeah. Um, man, the I want to find something to do with this, but I, I just can't find it. I'm I'm realizing how people are going to play this on Arena, and I already kind of hate it. Because people are going to be running this alongside Mass Graveyard Hate. And so what they're going to use, they're going to just... And it's going to be in those same decks that are running 20 board wipes and devious cover-up. <laughs> and the, they're just going to blow up your entire graveyard, then cast this. Game. It's like, you're welcome <laughs> to draw seven more cards. That's fine, but your graveyard's not getting shuffled back in. Mine is... And so you'll note my deck has 50 cards in it now and your your and yours has 20. Uh yeah. let's continue playing by the way Sunfall. Like and then here's a farewell. And it's like like sure maybe in the anyway. blue white deck if you're playing Jace the Perfected Mind as your win condition and your opponent has been able to successfully deal with your Jace after it's in the yard, shuffle them back and go again. <laughs> yeah, let's like, try this like, one more I time. Guess, I guess you could do that. <laughs> I have to imagine the though that the plot cost costing 6. mm mm-hmm. Mhm has to just enable you to set something up after the fact right like but you it's not like you can play the the plot plot cost at instant speed you still got to pay it for six right um but i you know i'd imagine if you if you're down to like two cards right yeah and you have this and shale dread in your hand but you only have six mana down mm -hmm. you want to clearly cast set between worlds and shale dread but you know, you're in a little bit of a bind there. So being having the flexibility of plotting Step Between Worlds. Yep. And then on your turn, being able to just say, Shaildred, mm -hmm. now before the opponent even gets priority back, I'm going to cast Step Between Worlds. You know, it's like, okay, now you yeah. can kill Shaildred in response or do something, but I'm going to, the your window of opportunity to respond to this is significantly shorter mm -hmm. than it would be otherwise. You know, those, I, th I feel like those kind of edge cases are what they're trying to set up with this. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe there's maybe there's some really insane value in that that I'm not seeing, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, I, like, I, I agree. I think too fair is the is a good way to say it. I see a blue card draw spell. It's not memory deluge. I move on. That's, <laughs> that's nowadays. How I that's feel. you know. It, oh, does it cost more than two mana? How many cards? Oh, yeah. no, nah, I'm good. Well, and it's yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's five or six sorcery it, mana. Just, it's sorcery mana. You have to you have to tap out a significant amount of mana in yep. a, in a blue deck in order to take advantage. So I I would play well after memory dealers rotates. I'm gonna play intrude upon the mind probably before I play this uh, yeah. from murders of Colored manner. But fair. the rest of the set has so many broken cards. Why can't we make this one broken too? Why can't we? Why can't we just get a time twister? Huh? Oh, you blue's know? gonna be. Pff, why can't we just get a straight reprint of time twister right into uh, yeah. three right into standard? Why not? Yeah. yeah, I'll just Fine. plot step between worlds for three. I'll there you go. Later. That's hey, yeah. This would have been this yeah. would have been a nice opportunity for them to print a card. You know how they've been like, I don't want to say that they've been trying to print like alchemy ish cards into actual paper magic, mm -hmm. but yes, this would have been a nice opportunity with like the plot mechanic. To print something like Oracle of the Alpha, not saying to create Power Nine, but right. print a card like that and say, plot these cards in exile, and you may cast them. Uh, that would have been like a nice little give. And but there is some precedent for that. Uh, I mean, in Modern Horizons, we had Garth One Eye, right? Yeah, which allowed you to create a you know Black Lotus token. So. Yep. So create, yeah, like Oracle the Alpha ish esque tokens. Just so all well, yeah, plot. yeah. That's that's a fun idea. Yeah. Oh, that'd be wild. Yeah. I don't know. Inter interesting idea. That I did. Yeah. Well, and it's funny that you mentioned alchemy esque cards, or at least the, I, whether alchemy esque or however you want to, whether the digital design is truly like it, like heavily impacting the paper design or not, I don't know. But in the paper design space, we are tracking things. 
uh, mm -hmm. that had previously been off the table, that which we do see on the digital clients quite a bit. And the next card that I want to talk about, which is another blue card, this is going to be our first mythic, if I'm not mistaken. Well, no, Terror was mythic. But in any event, Jace Reawakened is a card that has a static ability on it that I never thought we'd see in paper. But at the same time, it is very easy to track, so why not? Uh, it says you can't cast this spell during your first, second, or third turns of the game. Uh, which is a very interesting passive to have on a Planeswalker. It is uh, a Planeswalker, by the way. This is our one Planeswalker for the set. Ooh. Casting cost is blue-blue. Yeah. And it's uh, starting loyalty is three. Plus one, draw a card, then discard a card. Other plus one, you may exile a non-land card with mana value three or less from your hand. If you do, it becomes plotted. And negative six until end of turn. Whenever a, you cast a spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Mm -hmm. So is this good, good Jace, yeah, bad Jace? So this card... So it's it's a little bit. This is one of the. I feel like this card is going to be really good. First off, I one of this is one of those cards where I don't want to be like it's completely broken or it sucks. But there's a lot of people who think it's either completely broken or it sucks. And mm -hmm. There's just a few people that are in the middle. So that leads me to believe that this card is probably really good. Um, just because there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. First off, it loots whatever. Sure, ham. That's great for you. You like to reanimate. I'm into it. Two mana walker. I get to well, reanimate. It's one of those abilities. Um, it's generally good anytime. So, okay, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Draw this card, sure. Yeah. And then you get the plot. So I get to set up something for the following turn. Mm -hmm. But wait, there's more. What if it's a living end? <laughs> what if it's an ancestral vision? You know, what if it's all these cards from modern that you normally would cascade into? What if I can just set it up so that I can cast those cards when I want? Yeah. What if it's a restore balance? Wipe the whole battlefield. <laughs> I'll just, uh, yeah. you know, forget forget your whole battlefield. It's just gone now. And I have a Planeswalker that's going to keep upticking. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it'll ultimate. And then I'll probably just win because I'll cast one card, copy it. And yeah, that'll probably be it. So I just, I think like three fairy plus this is pretty cool. That, that feels pretty good probably. Um in standard, I feel like this card is just going to be really, really good. It's just going to be a fine card where you can set it up in control, set something up for later for free, mm -hmm. maybe like a draw spell, something like that. Right. Um, could be, but I think in older formats is where this card gets really spicy, where mm -hmm. you start to do some pretty broken things with it, possibly. Obviously, the biggest drawback of this card is that you can't just cascade into it on turn two. Because it literally right. says on the card you can't cast it. So it's like, uh, that's a little bit rough. So realistically, it's turn four into turn five with this card. But it You can cheat it into play, right? You mm -hmm. can't cast it during your first, second, or third turns of the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I'm able to, at instant speed on your turn, get this into play, mm. you can play it on those turns, right? Yep. And so not Leyland of Anticipation. Many. Yes, so Leyline of Anticipation lets you cast this card early, um, but also, um, I don't even think it's bad to want to play it on those later turns, right? Like, taking a look at it from like a blue-white control deck, and I don't think this is a good card in the control deck, but just taking that into account, uh, on turn 5, I can play 2 mana Jace, hold up counter spell, plus draw card, discard a card, mm -hmm. at worst. Um, because I'm probably not exiling a spell that costs three or less from my hand. Like that's probably not happening. The minus six is interesting though, because it says you can cast uh copy a spell. So it's not specific to instant or sorcery. If I cast a creature spell, I'm getting a copy of it and the copy is a token. So what if I'm mm. what if I'm minus sixteen Jace reawakened and casting a Tali Primal Conqueror? Then I can keep I'm just joking. We, Every deck's an Atali deck now. Um, but minus six As they cast be. Breach the Multiverse uh, isn't out of the ordinary. Nope. Right? Two Very breaches doable. off the minus six. Um, you, even if you really want to be feisty, you could plus one and exile Gavanic iteration uh, into plot, and then you can minus six Ooh. on the Jason case. Oh Cast yeah, the Panic iteration yeah. gets three breaches of multiverses. But, mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that's disgusting, and I love it. Like, also, well, if you have not. multiple, yeah, Galvanic iteration is great though, because yeah, plus one 
Exile of Galvanic Iteration, you have his ultimate set up next turn, even if he dies. That's yeah. <laughs> effectively. That's nuts. I love it. Cards oh. made with temporary lockdown against aggro decks. You can just uptick, put a lockdown under yep. it next turn. Just I can lock next down. Next turn, it's all gone. Mana up. Yeah, mm -hmm. Man up the deluge. Yeah. Or I can put my stun. Or I guess you can put stun fall under it. But. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, also I just, just yeah. think that it's this also, card's going to be really good. I, I agree. I think I agree with all of this. And playing it out on, you know, turn four or turn five and leaving mana back for a counter spell. Let's be honest. There are plenty of decks that would rather play it that way anyway. So just the fact that you're forced into it is, you know, that you lack flexibility in the early turns. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's fine. Honestly, I, I, I don't think that's as huge a drawback as it first seems. Right. Um, it's also a planeswalker that you can put uh, in Luris decks, which I think is interesting. Um, yeah, because we definitely needed that. that I know was we totally. On my that wish was list. very important. Yep. <laughs> yeah, definitely on my wish list of things is making <laughs> a, a more broken card broken mm -hmm. with more planeswalkers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Oh, this that's... card is nuts with Valky too. You can uh, up in Pioneer. You can uptake, put a Valky under it, and then tib all them and be like, "Ha ha, gotcha! Check it out." Uh, you can put Bramble was, Familiar under this in standard. Hey, it's a thing. And on the the plot, on the magic oh. stream, I believe that Matt uh, Tabak even mentioned that because I guess they were responsible for like pseudo designing Valky and said it like, was one of their favorite cards. Um, and so he made sure to put that in there. That yes, you can because somebody asked it in the in the in the stream, and he's like, absolutely, yes. Uh, almost like it was designed for that. Oh but my who knows? goodness! Yeah, this card's bonkers. I think that this card is a lot better <laughs> than people think. I yeah. think it's in between, though. I think that it's going to be really, really good in standard, but abusable in like older formats, or maybe in standard. There's like these split, some of these split cards. Maybe you can um, exile one of the split cards mm -hmm. because it costs less mana, and then you can maybe get to cast it again. I, I know that the rulings have changed on a lot of those cards, except for cards like Balky that are. On the other side, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I I think that a lot of people are the people who are discounting this are probably going to realize that it's really good when they lose to it or see it in modern for some uh, random reason. I'm going to do so much. Slow. Could just be uh, too slow. I'm going to do so much ridiculous bant nonsense and standard with this because, but with the bramble familiar interaction, I'm also realizing you can pitch this to um, restoration of Iganjo and bring it back. You don't say. <laughs> Just saying. That's an option. Because it's Wait, permanent that costs two or less. Yeah. Wait, what? Turn three, you play yeah. Restoration of Aganjo, right? You go grab a planes, whatever. The It ticks up to chapter two. Oh. You can then discard it and then bring it right to the battlefield with the with chapter two of Restor <laughs> Restoration of Aganjo. <laughs> don't tell people there's, that. There's got to be... <laughs> there's got to be something else. Then. <laughs> Something that's like, a little faster to cheat it out. I'm sure they're there. Yeah, I'm sure that's yeah. out there. But I'm yeah. Just like wondering, like, <laughs> there's got to be. Uh, no, what's the one with the little squiggly octopus on it where you return a, a non land card from the graveyard back? Um, the It's green, black, colorless. Scorming Emergence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can mill yourself. <laughs> your a Scorming Emergence would, with this would be super easy because, yeah, it would count mm -hmm. itself and then you got one more. That's it. Like, yeah. 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 Yeah, I just this gotta yeah. be cracking evolving this, this wilds card, and this, this really you're good, good to go. I, yeah, I I don't want to use the B word, but this card's really good. I think this, that I think the, if you know how to a little too powerful, then yeah, yeah. If, if you know how to play around it and you know how to build your deck correctly to get to prepare for it. Uh, the one thing of note, though, that I mm -hmm. I want to make abundantly clear for folks: when a card is plotted, it can only be cast at sorcery speed, no matter what its type is, no matter what. So if you plot a counter spell, it's gone, and like because right. you you you're never gonna have a target for it. it. The ruling on plot, the reminder text on plot specifically says you can cast it at sorcery speed during one of your turns or mm -hmm. whatever. So it's you are limited in that regard. So. Yeah, exactly. I think you're exactly right that like a traditional kind of Azorius control. I mean, yeah, you've got cards like Narset in older formats, and in standard you have maybe Quick Study, which isn't the worst thing to get for free. Yeah. But eh, I don't know. But yeah, no, also, I don't think it's going to be a slam dunk in those builds necessarily. But there are going to be plenty of plenty of brews that can take advantage of this thing. Also, not bad to like plot away one of the spree cards mm -hmm. for later, since their mana value is technically three or less. Indeed. 
So if yeah, you, you want to save a raft, for, want to save the raft for later? Sure, plus one wrath and exile, and yeah, then it, it lets you save up mana to cast all of the modes of that yep. card. Yeah, yeah, and that may okay. You might think, but like, but that's a terrible use of that that effect, right? Because then I uh, I still have to pay all the additional costs. So yeah, the wrath wrath now costs five, but I'm not limited to sorcery speed. Right. But if your opponent's running discard, if your opponent's running hand hate, and they've already hit you with like two thought seizes or two duresses and you know the bats and all that jazz being able mm -hmm. to just tuck it away in exile where they can't touch it might be very very valuable yeah. uh yeah or if that liliana's upticking although also liliana could also be plotted off that plus one so that's right. pretty good too holy cow yep we're gonna yeah, this, I, card. this card this card is man be... this card yeah I, this is up there for me too for best cards in the set i think this yeah. is up there uh definitely like top for me a top five or so far between this and the bird mm -hmm. are definitive cards that i expect to see played in competitive constructive formats mm -hmm. yeah yeah this thing's nutty all right the next mythic that i wanted to talk about is uh everybody's favorite frog horror we have the gitrog ravenous ride so the gitrog apparently uh after thalia rode it into battle during the phyrexian invasion was like hey that was pretty fun uh let's do some more of that it is right. a six five trample haste for five Whenever the Gitrog Ravenous Ride deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice a creature that saddled it this turn. If you do, draw X cards, then put up to X land cards from your hand onto the battlefield tapped, where X is a sacrifice creature's power. And it saddles mm -hmm. for one. So, saddle is a new mechanic in this uh, in this set. It is similar to how vehicles operate. It's similar to crewing vehicles. However, the mount is a creature independent of being saddled. It's a creature at all times. It can attack and block as normal like any other creature could. Mm -hmm. But if it becomes saddled, it gets some kind of buff. It's some kind of bonus. It's kind of an onboard kicker where you in in a particular combat or in a, on a particular turn, you can saddle a mount. And then when they ride into combat, they get a bonus for having been saddled. And it, often yeah. it impacts the rider as well, which I think is meaningful. And in this case... If a creature is saddling it, uh, the the frog after it, you know after it deals damage to the opponent might just eat the the rider, uh, yeah. and you get you get a benefit for it. So, yeah. So the I'm curious what you guys feel about here. this. Card. <laughs> yeah, the the frog's back. I, I have to say, I mean, we're not necessarily talking lore on this podcast, <laughs> but um, because I I could talk for for days about it. Good things, not necessarily bad things. But, I'd love to do that sometime, but yes, maybe that, that's a future I, show. Yeah, I did not expect seeing the Gitrog monster here out of anything that could come to this plane. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't hate it. I mean, by itself, it's a 6-5 Trample Haste for 5 mana. Like, those are the stats I want on my Gitrog monster. Mm -hmm. um, you know, forget necessarily the the whole like playing extra lands or sacking lands to do X, but um, you know, it lets you kind of do that, but then draws you cards, which I like my black and green cards to draw me cards. Mm -hmm. um, so that's great. I think get monster in standard currently has to compete against Aklazot's and Gix's command, um, which are insane five mana cards at those values, right? Like, Aklazot's to gain you life, it can get you card advantage, it definitely makes your opponents uh, discard cards, and you get bats and all of that such. Uh, but it doesn't have haste. So, it's saddle one, a bat can saddle up on the Gitrog monster, <laughs> if you really want, uh, on top of exiling cards from your hand and stuff. So, I kind of <laughs> like that interaction. Um, I think it's worth giving it a go, but um, <laughs> it definitely definitely is competing with other like good five mana effects in that same color scheme. Definitely, uh, number one, Shieldred card says draw a card. Got to mention Shieldred. Uh, number two, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. this and Mosswood Dread Knight are about to be like best friends forever because you can keep using the Mosswood Dread Knight to saddle up. Then the oh, yeah. Mosswood Dread Knight dies, it draws your cards. Then you can't see Adventure Side, I'm also a Dread Knight, and draw more cards. And mm -hmm. if we have the first thing I talked about, Shieldred in play, mm -hmm. and we're gaining a lot of life. So I think overall, I agree, this card does have a lot of cards that it's competing with at the 5 mana slot, but I think that it's like a 1 or 2 of some point in the metagame. I think that it's uh, as a shot, for sure, especially if those decks become more aggressive or, you know, 
however they want you want to build those types of strategies. But uh, I think there's some promise to any card that hits big like this card does and then draws cards. And you know, obviously putting lands into play, another maybe land card for the land deck. Um, use your detective to saddle it and then sack your, you know, do all this other stuff. But um, yeah, there's a lot of promise for this card even at five mana. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. It's funny. I was on stream. Uh, we were we were talking through some some spoilers, and I pulled this one up with the expectation of kind of talking about how bad it was because I didn't really like. I don't know. I, I was kind of like, I don't know. Like, why do we need Gitrog? It's just, it's just another green attacker. And then the more I talked about it, the more I looked at it, and the more times I was like, oh, but I mean, I guess that's kind of not bad. And then before I know it, I'm like, wait a minute. I think this frog kind of slaps. I think this is pretty good. Uh, cause yeah, six trampling haste power, exactly like what you're saying with things like the boss of Dread Knight. Like, if the monster Dread Knight saddles this, assuming you don't have a good attack with a 3-2, you know, like, let's say they have a 5-5 five, five down. You don't necessarily just want to throw your Dread Knight into a wall. Like, you know, if, they, if they're not at a low enough life total where that's super relevant. Well, instead, yeah, you can crew this and you swing in. If one power from the Gitrog gets through, you draw three cards and can drop up to three lands from your hand. I mean, that's big time. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think in general, this this card does uh, pretty darn good. It reminds me a lot of Makotai Soul Ripper from Kamigawa that I remember thinking was going to be super good, and that thing just ended up... It just never had a home. It just didn't mm -hmm. quite get there. You know, it's like, uh, so I have to tap a thing, and then I can sacrifice that thing if it, you know, in combat. But I think Gitrog is going to play a lot better. The payoff is significantly stronger. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. No, I think this is... Uh, yeah, I think this card's just good. Like beefy yeah. five drops. Like if I'm yep. doing the Golgari mid range list right now, maybe I'm doing a one of Aklazots, one of, one of Gitrog, and like whichever one I get to, I'm not mad. You know, right. <laughs> yeah. The plus side is I wouldn't hate to like buy back Gitrog monster off Gix's command or Takanuma for Ooh. the next six months, uh, yep. <laughs> into getting this card back. Right, like that's got to feel nice to if they kill Gitrog, Takanuma it back to your hand at end step. Slam the six five trample haste GG. Um, whereas, yeah, Aklazots are another creature. You got to wait another turn to do something with. Oh yeah, yeah. Saddle's cool and getting some upside's cool, but so is punching your opponent in the face for six haste, <laughs> um, which is probably going to happen a lot more often. Like you're saying, like oh, yeah. sad. like oh, they're going to saddle. It's like no, nah, I'm just going to attack with both of my creatures. It's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, it's gonna... horrible. I don't want you to do that. Don't do that. No. <laughs> also, notably. Um, this card dies to the uncommon red spell. I don't know if you have that up for us or not. Ham. Yeah, I, uh, I can get it up. Scorching Easy shot. Ooh, one of my which favorite is cards as well. A double red sorcery that deals five to target creature. Um, and you know this particular card. They said they put it in the set with Shieldred in mind, like to give another way for folks to deal with that card. If if people think. It's it, it's oppressive. Finally, um, finally got you know, two to mana be able to do this range. effect for two mana also is reminiscent of in you know the Tarkir block when they printed Roast to deal with Siege Rhino. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just to have that counter play. This card also notably kills the Skitrog monster for two it mana. Does. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think this card's great. This card's definitely going to get played in the red aggressive decks for sure. Um, this is kind of like a. I liked Witchstalker Frenzy. This card's a little better because mm -hmm. it's always two mana. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, not being able to hit other targets besides just creatures is kind of lacking. Right. But red don't care. It doesn't care. Kill your card, hit you in the face. Kill your card, hit you in the face. That's what we're going to do. And uh, yeah, I've seriously been wanting for since Rose, I've been wanting a two mana, five damage to a creature, no drawback. And this is as close as we're going to get because it's not instant. So there's still a little right. bit of a drawback. But um, I expect this card to get played quite a bit for sure. For two red, you mm -hmm. pretty much yep. kill most things in the format. Yeah. Sure. I mean, the, pretty much, I mean, outside of thing, you know, tokens or things that where Rafine has connived something to the moon, outside of those scenarios, uh, this doesn't hit like Atraxa, Atali, like those big those big monsters but even then if you have this in a play with fire you can take out an Atraxa. so even that's not terrible you know so yeah i think five damage to five damage to a creature i mean this is what red removal should look like and given how yep. big creatures are getting it's 2024 red finally got a new toy mm-hmm 
Yeah. So, any other thoughts on Scorching Shot? Or do we want to go back to the frog? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl, I, I think you're I muted. Like, I like the frog. The only thing I want to talk about in addition to Gitrog yeah. um, is, you know, and we haven't necessarily shown any of these other cards yet, but, like, I think you can play some Golgari Legends deck legitimately in Standard. Mm. Um you know, one of the cards in the set is like Tiny Bones joins up, and like it's a it's a one black mana. You, you, the opponent discards a card, but also this one of the legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control. <laughs> Any number of target players each mill a card and lose a life. So like, yeah, you have many legendary creatures on two, three, four, five, six that are Golgari and Plaza of Heroes is still legal for another mm-hmm. six months. Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of wanting to jam this playing Getrog at that top spot at five. Still play Shieldred. You have Glissa plus New Vraska at three. Um, you know, on two you have some new cards in this set and in old sets. Um, Absolutely, that make it worth it. And uh, plus you have Deep Cavern Bat. Um, I mean, which is so when in doubt on two, just run Deep Cavern Bat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I'm I'm enjoying the Golgari cards here. Um, just because they're so versatile, um, and they get to play some of the best removal spells in the format. Yeah, like shoot the sheriff. Spe- just saying. Yeah. Sure. Speaking <laughs> of Golgari cards, there was a card that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, let's um, do it. Pillage the Bog. Since we're on some Golgari cards, um, Pillage the Bog is a black and a green for a sorcery. You look at your top X cards of your library where X is twice the number of lands you control. Put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order and then you can plot it for three mana. Um, What I really like about this... So, first off, this card reminds me of a card from Alchemy. I can't remember what it's called. It's like Team Up or something. It's not Um, the Team. Oh, yeah. yeah, where you look at the first, the top third. Yeah, and this card kind of feels like that where obviously on turn two you can play this, look at your top four. Feels fine. It's an impulse. Yeah, but as the game progresses, you get to turn four. Look at eight cards. Turn five. Look at ten cards. What if we get mm-hmm. to turn seven or eight? I'm gonna dig sixteen deep. So I am gonna dig a third of the deck down. Yeah. To this card is like I I feel weird saying this. this card's almost a tutor. It's like, almost this card. Yeah. This card feels like it's as powerful as a tutor. Mm-hmm. For two mana, you could almost get the exact card that you need if your deck is built redundantly, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I need this type of creature. Well, I grab it. Oh, I need a re- X removal spell. Grab it. Board wipe. Got it. Like, and of course you can plot it. So then later on in the game, you're like, oh, I zero this. Cast it for right. free. Look at my top 16. Get the card I need. Cast it in the same turn. I... I feel like this is a card that maybe the Golgari deck was missing, kind of like a card advantage late mm-hmm. game engine that keeps the end keeps it going. It's like, oh, what am I going to draw? Okay, I need to hit a Shieldred. Yeah, let me look at my top eight. Did I hit the Shieldred? All right, I hit it. All right, I can cast it. Or look at my it's turn six. I look at my top twelve. I mean, I'm probably going to hit a card that I need. Yeah, right? yeah, yep. more than likely. Like, yeah, this card. I think this card just gets better. It's obviously a card that scales with the game, so it only gets better as we keep going. And at two mana, I mean. Yeah, that card's cheap. It it just really feels like a tutor. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. And as somebody who loves awkward combo decks, well, it's funny you mentioned Assemble the Team. I have played Assemble the Team in um in Timeless, and I gotta say, it it feels like extra copies of Demonic Tutor sometimes because the dig you get on it is massive. So, and yeah, if we can get similar similar digs with this, which I think you're right, I think it can. If you're patient, you know, if you fire it super mm-hmm. early, then. You're pretty much just drawing a card with some selection, and that's fine, maybe. But you, you, it, you will be paid off for your patience if you if you wait until late in the game on that one. Yeah. Yeah, you could almost play this in domain because you ramp so much, mm. right? Like you're gonna have a ton of lands into play, so you get to turn or you get to nine mana, and you're like, I need an attract, so dig eighteen cards deep, mm-hmm. and I will find the attracts in my top twenty. Yeah, thanks. Probably. I hate it. That yeah, that's absolutely gonna work. Holy cow! Um, so I I th- th- 
I read this card at work and I, I was just like breezing over the spoiler real quick and I was like, wow, this card. I was like, how come no one's talking about this card? This card's like almost a demonic tutor. Right. Uh, this card's <laughs> insane. There are multiple demonic tutor type cards in this set. <laughs> mm -hmm. Between this and Karlov Manor, Karlov Manor had the case of the whatever skeleton. Stash skeleton, yeah. That yeah, lets yeah. you tutor at the end. Like, I've never seen this many tutor effects in standard before, I don't think. Yep. And we were talking about Avaris earlier that, you know, it has a tutor. Cruelty Gix has a tutor on it still. I mean, right? yeah, we're, we got a lot going on right now. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Meanwhile, we don't really have any combo decks that are really popping off, which is, I think, unfortunate. But, uh, yeah. but I guess you could say that. that oh, the World Souls you're, Rage deck. Already, that team are, uh, combo deck. Yeah, the World, the World Souls Rage deck. And don't get me And uh, hey, I've been reenacting the Crime Breach. I've been doing that. I don't know if anyone else has, but it's. uh, Yeah. Yeah. I think you it's, jinxed us, Ham. I think there's going to be like an infinite combo now. Now that you're like, hey, there's no combos in this set. Mm -hmm. Infinite combo. I, it's I, just probably going to be. I get a feeling. There's gonna be an infinite combo. It's gonna involve one. like Voha or something, so that like it's yeah. it's gonna or it's gonna involve like Tomic and like and that like only a handful of people have because it was only in the pre-release kit and it's yeah, and it's only available yeah. in foil. So we're gonna have the Nexus of Fate all over again or whatever. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yep. Sounds good to me. Bring back Nexus of Fate. <laughs> it did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, bring back Nexus of Fate. It's Twin and Birthing Pod are all whether or not you would like Nexus of Fate back in the standard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please leave a comment down below or on whatever podcast app you have. Please let oh, us know if you would like Nexus of Fate no, standard. It's not good. <laughs> yeah, can't plot with Jace. Unplayable. Unplayable. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so yeah, speaking of uh, you, like kind of, I don't know, cards that are trying to do combos. Let's take a look at Make Your Own Luck. So. Yes. Yeah, so Hollywood, you you uh, expressed some interest in this one before we started oh, recording. Sorcery, uh, three green blue exile, or sorry, look at the top three cards of your library. You may exile a non land card from among them. If you do, it becomes plotted. Put the rest into your hand. Yes, I will be plotting omniscience on turn three with this card, potentially in Pioneer and Explorer. I will go turn one over Mystic, turn two Growth Spiral, turn three play this card. And put an omniscience on the side, and the next turn I'll be casting my omniscience for free, retaining priority, and potentially casting more cards for free. So, um, you mean yeah, you like free not spells? A, well, I, I draw two cards too. I, I draw two cards, and, and you draw two cards exactly. Yeah, I, I draw two cards. <laughs> um, I can't believe this I, card is uncommon. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah this card. There's like some rares in the set that don't feel rare, but this is an uncommon that definitely feels rare or potentially mythic. Like, uh, yeah, you know, play this, exile my extra turn I, spell. I mean, this play, is an Aetherworks Marvel spin, spin isn't it? Except you draw two yeah. cards? Yeah, you right. can um you could do Ulamog. You can <laughs> plot an Ulamog with this. That was another card I was thinking of. I was like, oh yeah, I just plot a Ulamog, then on my next turn I play Ulamog untapped. And I yeah. have a counter spell up, and it's like, oh, wow, that's unfair. Uh, that's very unfair. So yeah. yeah, that's why I was hyped about this card was because it's it just reads broken. You're just like, oh, five, and you can play it on turn three at the earliest. If Leyline wasn't banned in Pioneer, you could play this on turn two into turn three on missions. <laughs> but yeah. luckily, it is, so you can't do that. But oh my goodness, um, this card feels bonkers. I, I mm -hmm. don't know. It just feels. It draws two cards. That's not even the best part about this card. Yeah. We're not I even mean, talking about the fact that it draws extra cards. It doesn't even if matter. You, just... If you completely whiff, you you draw three cards. Like, that's the floor on it. Well, yeah, five mana for three cards. That's not great. Mm -hmm. But with the potential of, yeah, free casting an Ulamog, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, now the only thing you have to wait a turn for the for the free cast to happen and your opponent sees it coming so you are setting up if they have a counter spell they can just sit on it and yeah, wait but, mm -hmm. ham can they really deal with the whole breaker horror that's about to be cast for free like let's be honest here like can they really deal with oh that, that one yeah no that's <laughs> absolutely well, not when i just cast it now every card in my hand is like a counter spell like uh yeah this i don't really know if this card is going to get played but mm -hmm. the potential for it to I, be broken is I want the there. Jank. I want the jank with it. Yeah. I, I think it could be competitive. I honestly think that you ramping into this and then you play your first one and then you, you play your free card. Then the next turn you play another one and you set up. I mean, you just play this in ultimatum. You play ultimatum yep. for free off of this. Why wouldn't you do that? That, that just seems like a auto include, right? You play like two of these in your ultimatum deck and then right. like, oh yeah, I guess I cast this for free and go get some more cards. I don't know. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like the old Tybalt's trickery style, gigantic nonsense decks are going to be a thing again. Whether they're competitive and whether they can win because you're relying on a five drop instead of a two drop in that case, mm -hmm. which obviously massive difference. So like, I don't think this is going to be meta defining by any means, but the number of people who are going to be trying to make this work on the ladder, like in the first week, oh, yeah. buckle up, everybody. It's going to it's, it's gonna be a thing. So yeah, if they have access to five mana, just hold up your counter spells. Just hold up a spell pierce because this is coming out. Uh, and yeah, and there are going to be plenty of times where people just free spin into an Atraxa and their mono red opponent just punches their monitor. And, you know, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be yeah. nuts. Yeah, Omniscience, Ultimatum. Mm -hmm. any, um, any of those gigantic Atraxa, things. Portal of Phyrexia. Uh, Holly yeah. in Standard. Mm -hmm. I think that this card has play in Standard. I mean, yeah, it, it, the thing... The thing with this card is, is that you either have to be really fast, or you have to have a good enough like stopping game against the opponent for this card to be. Wait for you to have enough time for this card to be good, because in older formats, yes, you can play this card faster, so it doesn't really matter. Like turn three into turn four, you if most of the time in Pioneer you still don't really lose. The only deck you lose to is like yeah. Grease Fang, mm -hmm. Phoenix sometimes, so it's not as bad, but. Um, in standard, I mean, yeah, you can, can you still play this on turn three? Uh, Close. there are mana dorks on turn two. Yeah. Um, so that means on turn three, you would have, uh, access to four mana. Yeah. And there's, and there are cards like glimpse the core for two that get you a forest. So that yeah. could, yeah. yeah it's, so it's close. Yeah. You, you can get it on turn four pretty consistently, but turn, yeah. Turn three is a tall order. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot more unrealistic. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, even turn your first couple turns, you just set this up. And then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like oh, and timeless is turn two, or whatever. No. <laughs> that might be a little. <laughs> yeah, there's dark ritual in that format. We'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I was thinking of this card for timeless because of the show and tell deck. You can just mm -hmm. play this as like an alternate to show and tell. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I'll just dig deeper and go get the omniscience or mm -hmm. whatever I need. I just. Yeah, there's like I said, like I don't know if this card's really going to be that good, but anytime it, this set has so many free spells, one yeah. of them's got to hit. Right. Like one of them's got to hit. And if it's this card, then cool. It's pretty much how I feel about it. It's yeah. it was fun. Like I I read it and I was like I'm not just an Ulamog. Here we go. Extra turns. Mm -hmm. I love doing all that stuff for yeah. free. Yeah. It's just so mean. It's or Magma nuts. Opus. Remember that card? That's a card too. I do I do remember Magma Opus. Yeah. 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 Try that one. <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see. What is the next uh card that we can look at? Ah, okay, here we go. So we were looking at uh we were looking at birds earlier. We got more more birds, and we have a bird wizard, which I love bird wizards. They're great. Slick shock slick shot show off. It is a one-two bird wizard for one and a red with flying and haste. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, slick shot show off gets plus two plus zero until end of turn, and it plots for one red. Mono red. Easy clap. This I Phoenix mean this X. is Phoenix this X, X nuts, and Pioneer right? are gonna love this, right? This is like a little this is more aggressive than Ledger yeah. Shredder. Like you can, I don't know, you can pop I don't know that it's better it than Ledger Shredder. In I think it's Phoenix, close. Because the Shredder, the Shredder lets you connive and discard more Phoenix to the mm -hmm. yard. Sure, um, sure, yeah. That's there, that deal. being said, though, you could play it in a Wizard deck with like Balmor, um, in in like that type of a format. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how good it would be, but it can be done. Um, but th this card just screams mono red to me because before this, mono red only really has one flyer that it plays, and that's Phoenix check, right? Mm -hmm. It all raging. The two drop is always felled in, right? Yeah. Or charming scoundrel. Mm -hmm. um, well, they have the and this card that just lets you sometimes. Yeah. What's that? They have the vampire blood blood thirsty is another thirsty adversary. Drop. Yeah, that one's yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, but mono red becomes better when it has cards with evasion. Um, mm -hmm. so like being able to play like monstrous rage on this card turns monstrous rage into a plus five plus one spell for this. So you get to attack for six power on turn three, plus mm -hmm. your other burn spells. Like if you lightning strike the opponent, they take three plus two more because it's yeah. not a once per turn on this card. So it's just a better, it's a better prowess. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you, I don't know why you would plot this card unless you. You can have a big turn. You can set it up so that you can plot it, yeah. so that it doesn't die, so that they have to have an instant speed removal spell. Then you can cast it on yeah. your turn. Potentially cast all these other plot cards or all these other cheap mana cards and kind of yeah. go off yeah. and kill them in one hit. It's similar to the situations where you'd want to dash a Ragavan rather than just play yeah, it out. That's, that's yeah, that's a good similar kind of vibe. Yeah, because if you, you can plot it on two and then on turn three you have three mana open. If you if I mean the dream scenario where you have two monstrous rages and a play with fire. You know, like you yeah. you throw this down for free and then just bam, bam, bam. Like Or, you know, you can plot it if you were playing yeah. like Fugitive Codebreaker from yep. from Karloff Manor or the the red case that says you need to have zero cards in hand to solve it, right? Mm-hmm. So you can plot it away for later, get your engine on to keep drawing a bunch of cards a turn, and then cast this for free plus the non creature spells. So it works yeah. really nice with that little synergy. Um, while not fighting for a slot with like Godric, because right, who mana yes. versus three, which is nice. Oh, and if you're trying to trigger Godric Celebration, it can be a permanent that's entering the same turn as Godric. So right. yeah, so that's another benefit to to plotting it potentially. So mm-hmm. it just gives you flexibility on yeah. yeah the, the idea of spending the mana one turn and then having it enter another turn later at uh, that you have discretion over. I I dig that design. That's going to be mm-hmm. fun to play with. Yeah. Look, so, it's yeah. got a cowboy hat. Playable. It's, it's a bird wizard with a cowboy hat. Yeah, I'm in. That's all that, That's all I needed. Yeah. Yep. I, I think it's stuff. good. Ledger Shredder at home. You're right. That's how I feel about it. Ledger Shredder at home. Absolutely. All right, so next up, we have another spree card because we talked so much. We, we talked about all the spree cards because they're all very interesting and all of the designs seem really strong. And this one is the Great Train Heist. Uh, so instant for a red this time. With spree, three modes. Plus two uh, red. Untap all creatures you control. If it's your combat phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. So similar to uh-huh. uh, a- aggravated assault or any of that jazz. Plus two creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain first strike until end of turn. Or red. Choose target opponent. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to that player, create a tapped treasure token. Yeah. Uh- Thoughts? I love this. This specifically for me was an EDH pick mm-hmm. because all the take an extra combat cards get played in EDH, and this right. is just a card with upside. So, you know, for what is it? Four mana, you get an extra combat. For five mana, all of them make treasures. And then for an extra two mana, you can pump them up and give them first strike so they have a good combat. Mm-hmm. So they survive the first combat phase. Um, yeah, I just, that's about it really for me on this card. I don't expect to see this card in standard. Uh, if I'm wrong, cool. Um, right. But besides that, it's like a this is like a really good modal EDH card. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree with that, yeah. and I kind of had that same feeling when I saw the last mode on it, because you know, in what world am I playing an aggressive red deck in standard? I get an additional mm. combat phase, and there is a rest of the game after that. I mean, like if I'm yeah. not ending it right then, we have a problem. So the ability to create the treasure tokens that smacks to me of. Uh, yeah, EDH, kind of having that in mind. Because, yeah, I mean, in, in Commander, like, yeah, I could beat up on you a whole bunch, and you you probably still won't die because, you know, unless it's later in the game, just because we're all at pr- fairly high life totals, and we got a bunch of other people. So yeah. ramp is never unwelcome in, in Commander. So, yeah. But, oh, cool cool card. And, yeah, I definitely agree. The, the extra combat phases can never have too many extra combat phases if you're playing aggro in, in uh, EDH. Oh, yeah. Oh. <sighs> Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so let's see. We also have. I'm looking at the list that you sent me before uh, Hollywood sent me before we got started. Let's take a look at Ruthless Lawbringer. This is a vampire assassin. Three, two for one white and black. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target non-land permanent. The Crimson Valkar got played for a bit, so I could see this card getting played. It replaces mm-hmm. itself. It's a body on the battlefield, pretty sizable one with three power. And on top of that, you literally destroy anything on the battlefield. So if I sack a, one of the gods from Ixalan, it comes back as a land, and there's still some upside there that I can use later. Mm-hmm. Some of these other, you know, Tenacious Underdog, Moss with Dread Knight, all these cards have upside when you sacrifice them and so on and so forth. So getting a little bit of that extra advantage is good. And I still live in a dream scenario where Anvil is a deck <laughs> and this card gets played in it somewhere. Yeah, a Mardu Anvil with this? Absolutely. I love that. 
Yeah, as I, it's funny you mentioned the Rite of Oblivion from from Innistrad. I definitely have played that quite a bit. I think that card is way better than uh, a lot of people realize, and it's sacrifice a thing, exile. Uh, you know, a, a permanent, a non-land permanent. Yeah. That flexibility on removal is a big deal. And having a sacrifice outlet is also relevant in a lot of decks, such as Anvil or, uh, I don't know, there, there are also a bunch of cards with death triggers on them right now that mm -hmm. aren't seeing a lot of play, but I think could in the right circumstance. So I'll be interested to see if this opens up uh, some of yeah. those, or if, if this becomes part of that shell. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's all the right pieces are here. Yeah. yeah. There's some... There's some in the set that they have previewed to wherever this card is definitely um, limited playable. I believe today they like previewed a 2-2 uncommon skeleton that keeps coming back to the battlefield. Excellent. So, like cards like yep. that are fantastic with Yeah, this. when you com committed a crime, it can come back, I believe. Right. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, and, and this so is committing a crime because you're targeting one of your opponent's things. Right. If if you're the thing you're destroying is your opponent's. That's yep. yeah. Huh. So it's nice that they're 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 doing that. Um or just sacking like tokens and stuff, right? Like sacking a token made from like Mirex or you know, if you're you're playing any enchantments that are putting creatures out there, whether that be wedding announcement or um like Skrull's Hive or something like mm -hmm. that. Um this card definitely pairs well with those. Absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. I I think I do this a lot whenever we're doing like set talk and stuff or spoiler talk. Um, I like to pick these commons and uncommons that I think are actually a little bit over the curve, kind of like um, mm -hmm. obviously these aren't up the beanstalk type level, but um, I just think that this set is so good that the commons and uncommons are just juiced. This whole set just feels so juiced, like everything is powerful. Yeah. yeah. And a card like Ruthless Lawbringer definitely shows us where it's once again on curve, does something. Gives you, you know, it's a sacrifice card, so you know you're going to use that to your advantage. So, yeah, um, yeah. I think that this is a card that kind of gives a good example of like how good. I mean, there's an uncommon Snapcaster Mage in this set. You know, like they, this is this is where we're at in these days of Magic. So, um, yeah, there is. Yeah, <laughs> wild. Yeah, there definitely is. Yeah, absolutely wild. All right, so. There are only a handful. There's only like one or two more cards that I really want to talk about uh, before. We dive in to the, the. I definitely want to talk about uh, one of the sillier jokes that they're doing, but I'd be remiss if we didn't give a take a, take a second to appreciate the fast lands. So yeah, Hollywood, you mentioned them earlier uh, that Called you did it. call it, which sure enough, and here we are. I, I put Blooming Marsh on screen for the video, it, folks. It made the most sense. It made the names and everything mm -hmm. mostly Spire Bluff Canal. As soon as I this set was spoiled, I was like Spire Bluff Canal. It's, it's going to be in the canyons. It's going to be in the desert. That's yep. it. They got to put the fast lands in there. It just made the most sense. Yeah, like, it's nice to oh, have yeah. these back because it means we don't have to play with bad cards like Thran and Portal um, in the <laughs> fast aggro deck. So, like, yes. granted, the, Bo the Boros Convoke deck is still kind of Nutter Butters, but I mean, it needs to play Thran Portal to make sure it can play both of these colors on turn one. And now we don't. We could just play Inspire Advantage, which is great. Um, or some number of it, anyway. Um, well, so I, I love that we have these, uh, you know, the the Merfolk deck definitely can take advantage of Botanical Sanctum mm -hmm. um, on top of, like, Cavern Souls and Secluded Courtyard and the, and the Painland. You know, we're in six months, we lose the, the Tri-Lands, and so we're going to be mm -hmm. stuck with Fast Lands, Surveil Lands, the Creature Lands, the Restless Cycle, right? Yeah, um, we're losing the slow lands too, all of them. So that's gonna be yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah so, that'll definitely change the way we're we're playing. Yeah, yeah. It, it enables the aggro decks to be better. Mm -hmm. Um, and while the aggro decks have been popping out in standard recently, between like Bant Toxic, which is gonna have access to Botanical Sanctum and Sea Chrome Coast now, mm -hmm. um, you know, being able to play against like the Boros deck or, um. You know, any any of these like three color combination aggro decks makes Naya um Naya Convoke more plausible with the addition of Inspiring Vantage. Um I like it. I like yeah. it. I, we we were missing this for quite some time, and you had to know that they were gonna give us ten in a standard cycle. The right. question was yeah. just when. So Yeah, they're not gonna redo the the thing with the triomes where like everything cycles and now the other the other rest of them. It's like Right. But why is there cycling so in Nickel Pena? Don't worry time. about it. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. I was just happy that they're here because it really makes Standard a lot better. Standard has mm-hmm. the best mana base of all time. It's like insane. Right? It's, it's pretty good. It's hey, and it'll help folks gather these lands up for Pioneer Season. Very true. All yeah. right. So there's another card I want to talk about. I want to ultimately this, this is let, let's this is gonna be the last card that we want to talk about today because uh, it has been running long. Thank you everybody for sticking with us. We really appreciate it. You're all amazing. Uh, we're coming up on on two hours at the moment. So thank you gentlemen also for sticking with it because there's so much to talk about oh, yeah. this set. So bovine intervention is an instant for one in a white destroy target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a two two white ox creature token. And you heard the name right. It's called Bovine Intervention. Uh, because th- that is in reference to another card in the set that I- I- it exists called Holy Cow. <laughs> and it's literally a, a, an ox angel. It's literally like yeah. an angelic cow. That's a thing <laughs> that exists now in Magic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, bovine intervention is just uh, a cheap removal spell for two mana. Yeah. Um, you know, the other cards that obviously you can compare this to now are Fateful Absence and Get Lost. Right? Mm-hmm. Get Lost gives you two map tokens behind. Fateful Absence gives you a clue token, but can only hit creature or planeswalker. Um, whereas Get Lost hits enchantment, yep. creature or planeswalker. This card only hits artifact or creature. Um, but it's still a strong two mana card. Mm-hmm. Um, the question is, how many scenarios do you want to leave behind a two two creature for your opponent? Like, obviously, I'd rather have my opponent have a two two ox than a four five shieldred, um, or a one four Rafine, right? Because it's just easier to deal with those cards when they mm-hmm. are cheap tokens. But that being said, it does leave you opponent behind with something. Um, True. Which has Definitely. always been like a criticism of playing like get lost. Like, do I want my opponent to have two map tokens? They get to explore twice. Um which, you know, I think it is a very fine card. Um mm-hmm. yeah, what do y'all think? I think it, I think this has a chance. I mean get lost is in standard, so it's gonna be harder, but get lost doesn't hit an artifact. This does maybe in a world where artifacts are more played, this card gets played. Um I really like this for EDH too. It's just another beast within. Just kill something. They get a token, mm-hmm. and you know it's gone now. So it, it's just one of those. Just a solid uncommon has utility in different formats, and the potential we see it in standard. Yeah, I, I think, agree. Yeah. A two, two two is scarier than a map. Um, yes, but a map could potentially give two more power. So yeah. right, it's close. You know. Yeah, the fact close. that the two two we we know that this two power isn't going to be on an evasive threat, whereas the maps maybe it is. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that's there's a give and take there. I think it, it really comes out to how common are non-creature artifacts. That's going to be the question. If non-creature artifacts are a big deal, this is going to see play. Like uh, I'm sure of it. You know, if we do find people doing make your own luck, you know, spinning into Portal to Phyrexia left, right, and center, then mm-hmm. all of a sudden maybe bovine interventions worth slotting into your decks. You know, uh, having a clean two mana. I mean, we're in a situation where like disenchant's legal and. A disenchant is one of those cards that I always feel is underrated. More people should run it, but then I never run it. So, um, you know, I don't know if you guys have any cards like that, but this yeah. is, you know, get lost has the enchantment removal portion of it. This has the artifact removal portion of it. I, I like yeah. that. So yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's a clean design and depending on the meta, it might be, might be solid removal. Yeah. Yeah. And also taking a look at like price points of cards. Cause I think that's important mm. when taking this into account. Right. Like, Faithful Absence rotates in six months, and it's a 50-cent rare. But Get Lost is, like, a $6 card now in paper. So, mm-hmm. obviously, having easier access to the same type of cheap removal um, for paper players, anyway. Um, yeah. And also relevant for, you know, saving wild cards on Arena. Um, instead of Very crafting, true. like, Get Lost, like, how long can you play with this until you earn your your wild cards up to be able to to get the better versions of the cards if you think something like get lost is better that, that's a great great shout yeah for budget players this is awesome yeah good stuff yep cool 
Well, I was, I was, I would ask if there are any other cards that we want to talk about, but I feel like we've covered it pretty darn well. I mean, at this point, we're a couple of days into spoiler season, and there have been a ton of things that have been oh, yeah. absolutely just inundating various socials mm -hmm. and whatnot. So definitely, we will talk more uh, in, in future episodes. Yeah, so we, please, we didn't get to breaking news or the big score, but these are like true. some special sheets that are there. Yeah, um, we'll definitely get to them in the future podcast. Yes, but yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, to think of how much this set there is. Um, just because we're we yeah. spent two hours talking about the base set and there's two special sheets, it's pretty absurd. Actually, it's, it's yeah. nuts. Um, yeah, yeah. The set's great. It's banana I, bananas. I love this set. This set is just amazing. I I'm excited. I'm really really excited. I love westerns, so I I love this set already. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I just uh, I can't get enough of it. I, <laughs> I didn't like murders at all. I thought murders was horrible. But this set, this is another set that's like this should have this should have came after. This is the set that should have came after. They should have started the year off great. But this set, right? We would have been like Eldraine, Ixalan, Outlaws would have been like the th some of the three best sets they've ever done. But instead, we had yeah. Murders. We needed Kellen to be a detective first. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I I enjoyed the cards in Murders. I got, but I got like the the characters in the story. I was kind of eh, okay. Like the, that, I think that all happened. I think we're spoiled in the set having more powerful cards and murders. Murders True. was a power down set, and rightfully so. You can't just print like banger after banger, mm -hmm. um, power crep dot set. I mean, lots of cards are power crep nowadays, but right. there's no way we can't have one insane set after another. Yeah. Um, it's clear that the power level is much different with Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Um, and it's interesting to see how the cards will pair off of each other. Yeah. Um, like there's cards in the set that have things have, have to do with like token creation and not necessarily creature tokens. And now we generate all different types of tokens in mm -hmm. standard and other formats. So, right. It's nice to see. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, so I have a sneaking suspicion that this set is definitely going to shake things up and it'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see just where it all lands, uh, coming out the other side. So, yeah. but yes, so definitely subscribe uh, on uh, YouTube or your podcast app of choice, wherever you're listening to us, please follow the show. Cause we will be back with more spoilers next week. Before we go, gentlemen, go ahead and uh, let the people know where they can find you on the internet. Cause fun fact, we're all individual creators as well. In addition sure. to this. So yeah, let people know where they can find you. You can find probably, me, uh, twitch.tv slash Hollywood pizza. Uh, mostly nowadays I just, uh, stream the pizza box tournaments, which you can find twice a month. Uh, all free to play with cash prizes. You can also find me on YouTube, Pizza Box MTG, and you can find me on Twitter uh, at Pizza Goy for at Pizza Box MTG. Mm -hmm. uh, usually just hanging around, posting some cards I like. Love it. Yeah, yeah and Carlo. so uh, my name is Carlo or C Favretto underscore Junior. Many places on the internet, from Twitch to Instagram to TikTok to Threads, if that's a, still a thing, and and Twitter too or X. Uh, but yeah, you can find me there. I mostly stream standard content, a lot of viewer decks, uh, but we've been doing some extra competitive nights a week because of some tournaments that have been upcoming. Uh, but yeah, all of those links are below. Rock on. And you can find me at uh, HamHawks42 on Twitch and YouTube and at Hawks42 on Twitter and TikTok. Um, yeah, doing all kinds of just... Yeah. yeah, a little bit of everything. Did tried all kinds of brews, trying to find the the hidden corners of the metas that other people aren't playing in, and mm -hmm. uh, trying to trying to find it. But in, in any event, and of course, I can't wait to get my hands on all these new, insanely powerful build arounds. Because yeah, mm -hmm. if you want to see all those in action, definitely follow us on all the things. The links will also be in the description. So yeah, and you're gonna see a lot coming forward. So <laughs> here we are. But yes, thank you everybody for sticking with us. Thank you, gentlemen, for you know being here and running through these cards yeah. uh yeah so yeah again everybody I'm so it's late i'm not very articulate this late i apologize <laughs> but have a good one everybody we'll catch you on the next one later later <laughs>